But your source is not correct for my mic. Oh, no. <laughs> there you go! <laughs> Yeah. It's not a stream unless there's problems. It, it's not a stream if there's no issue, right? My audio source for my Two microphone. Two types of streamers, those with tech issues and liars. <laughs> yep. Oh. <laughs> but hey. And those who forget to change the scene. Exactly. <laughs> Look. If, are you a professional streamer if you don't have any you know, weird issue or forget to do things? No, you're not. Don't lie to us. Mm -hmm. Uh... But hey, you beautiful nerds, and welcome to our very first game uh, for our anniversary event this year, benefiting, as Derek mentioned, benefiting Extra Life uh, through a wonderful charity. And this year, I'll again be running a game. This time around, I'm going to be running the Expanse RPG by Green Ronin Publishing. So that's going to be super fun. And I do believe for my entire cast here, it is their first time playing that. So. Yeah. That's that's gonna be exciting. So just a few little things uh, that I want everybody to let you know that if in chat you do exclamation mark incentive Frank my name there you go because it's easier to just create various command instead of updating them every time. Uh, your donation can impact the game and what things if things are gonna go well or not so well for our little crew over here um, there's a lovely mechanic in the expense called the churn the higher it goes the worse things get and you can either up it or lower it if you're feeling so inclined uh, by donating to extra life and picking that specific incentive um, I'm just gonna do so before we actually get in proper let's do a quick round table and introduce our cast today uh, uh, let's go by how i see in the overlay top left to bottom right panda award-winning panda hi awkwardish panda i'm very awkward and roughly panda sized and queer uh i'm playing d uh our pronouns are she they mm -hmm. fantastic kira Hi, I'm Kira858. I'm glad to be here. I'm playing Phoenix. Pronouns also he, they. Awesome. Brandon. Hi, I'm Brandon, aka Ashworks. You already heard Derek talk about me, so, you know, go check out my stuff. Um, <laughs> and I am playing Riff today, and both of us use he, him. Awesome. Jamie. Hi, I'm Jamie Wolf. I do art and I play video games and I spend a lot of time over on that nerd's channel. Uh, so, you know, well, did I point the right way? I did point the right way. Huh? Yes, you are. Uh, yeah. Nice. So, uh, you know, you can check us out across the board in either place. Uh, and I will be playing Lola, whose pronouns are she, they. My pronouns are they, them. Fantastic. And last but not least, Kitty. Hey everybody, I'm Kitty. I mostly play on Rafiki's channel, this channel here, and uh, my pronouns are she, her, as well as I'm playing Des today, also she, her. Awesome. All right. Well, it looks like the intro introduction are out of the way. Let's dive in in the first game. All right. So. I heard double audio, that was weird. Uh, the year is to, uh, 2051, with Earth and Mars on brink, once again on brink of war, following the Eros incident, where a giant asteroid essentially more or less became apparently sentient. Why do I hear myself in double? Okay. Do you have yourself muted in roll 20? Good question. Let me check something here. All right. You know what? I'm a professional here, right? Uh, oh, that's... All right. Property. No, that's good. All right, well... Uh, whatever, let's go ahead. Um, where was I? Yeah. 
so uh, once again her and Marth are possibly on the brink of war following that incident and the more or less becoming sentient asteroid and the first introduction to the pro proto molecule which is a little interesting little thing however uh, currently there seems to be some uh, peace talk between earth and mars which when there's peace talk and they stop pointing their gun at each other they usually end up stepping on the belt the inhabitant of the asteroid belt and other planet uh, everything can cause quite a stir and especially around Tycho station but that might be slightly due to the fact that the generation ship built that was under the construction there, the Nauvoo, uh, was used as an improvised battering ram by uh, the people owning that station. Which the owner of that, people who were funding that ship were not so keen and happy with. Uh, I would not be either. Uh, and that's where more or less we see our crew here. The crew of the Tamet comes in. A few days ago, a uh, message was sent in to your ship, sent by Caleb Morgan, Death's sibling, uh, asking if she could help her with a little situation happening around the station. Some scientists have been, that have been pre previously assigned to the NAV project uh, seem to have been disappeared and the Mormon funding the project, having lost faith in the general security of the station and in Fred Johnson, uh, don't necessarily want to rely on him to find them. And this with this that with your course approaching towards the Tycho station, that we will begin our little adventure. Welcome to Tycho Station. Welcome to the Expanse. So, your ship is on, I, I wouldn't say fast approach, because you have to slow down uh, in order to get there. On approach towards Tycho Station. Any, and who do we see in the command deck? sitting in the pilot seat with uh, her droid next to her. You see her having short brown hair, kind of nicely uh, cropped. A look of absolute exhaustion over her face. She's wearing simple clothes because she's too tired to get into anything fancier. And her droid, Goober, next to her is holding a pot of coffee with a cup next to it, just waiting. And the most interesting part about Goober is the fact is that they have two googly eyes upon their face. And it's absolutely hilarious when it's in zero G. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how that works in zero G. I'm pretty sure it will just wobble a bit around. <laughs> Creepily is what I am thinking. <laughs> that's that's probably the feeling of that. All right. And where is the rest of you on board of the Hamid right now? And introduce your character. So, uh, D is in their room, in a hammock, just kind of chilling, kind of just trying to stay out of her way. Uh, she's got lavender hair. She we typically wears like baggy ass cargo pants, a tight tank top, and either a jacket or a hoodie. Um, and she's just kind of trying to stay out of literally everyone's way and act like she's not even there. Yeah, D is one of the most recent uh, crew member, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, crew. I don't know where she came from. <laughs> Crew. I showed up one day. <laughs> and one day she, it's fine. she was here. She gave me coffee and I was happy, so it was fine. It's, it's all right. Um, Lola is walking the hall, probably just 
going up nervously going over last minute things before docking just you know standardizing making sure we're up to snuff in all the ways uh she has gr long green hair that she keeps in a braid and a ventilator mask that's usually like it's not exactly practical in space but it is a, more of a comfort from home than anything uh some around her belt there are various spray cans of various different uh spray paints aerosols um and she, uh she kind of like nervously taps at a computer to double check that you know everything's stable she really hates any time we have to dock if if she had her way we would end up perpetually suspended in space in the in the ship at all times but we'd run out of supplies that way so eh. yeah it's always good to dock here and there refresh your air supplies that's probably one of the primary thing you want to refresh um. and and speaking of docking rifts down in the engines uh making sure our landing gear is actually going to work this time uh considering the last couple times we've docked he's had to spend about two days fixing it once they actually connect everything so he's got goggles down and he's just working his way at it um and phoenix is located within the armory uh with um bullets and and, and guns placed in a very mechanical and organized fashion uh they're triple checking double checking all of the items that they have in place um, and they're just, uh, they have long brown dress with bright blue eyes, uh, slight oval shape of face, uh, athletic physique uh, with uh, a shirt that comes across the shoulder, large baggy pants and boots. Uh, they clearly look like someone who has seen action for a long period of time. And they are just completely in the zone as they make sure they have all of the equipment necessary to be able to protect themselves and the crew. Fantastic. All right. And as you're currently approaching, uh, you're within like, I'd say like 500 meters of the station, maybe like a bit further apart. I do I receive a hail in the command deck. Uh, Tahamut, this is Tycho Station. Um, uh, please relieve your, uh, your controls so, so that we can dock you appropriately to dock 5. This is Captain Desdemona. All controls are you. Alright. <laughs> and... Where am I? Oh, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and the ship control are relieved to Tycho Station, which is easier than trying to navigate yourself in there. Uh, they know all the, all the docking procedure, where you need to la and land based on your ship class and size. And. Slowly but surely, the thrusters are off, just EVAing through until you're close. And Tycho Station, unlike many, you know, station in the belt, which are built around big rocks, is entirely man-made. It's just a big metal structures. Uh, one of the first, and probably one of the, uh, I don't want to say best station out there, but one of the better equipped one in general uh, you can see uh, if you look on your uh, monitors and just look at the station itself that there was at some point a very large working area which has been clear uh, due to a giant ship now missing um, with docking procedure engage you are now at the station uh, you do re remember uh, real, uh, from your communication, uh, Des, that your sister uh, asked if you could meet with Apostle Birch, uh, which is the uh, highest ranking uh, Mormon currently on Tycho Station, who has been asking around and stir for help with the current matter. Uh, but yeah, you are currently. At the station. Crew to Tamet, what do you wish to do? How, how do you prepare to disembark? Um, Captain, this is your third weekly reminder to uh, switch to tea instead of coffee that you're going to ignore. 
What? I didn't hear that. He was talking to me. Mm. Exactly. I don't know why you're going to keep doing this. Maybe one day it'll actually happen. Maybe one day. Phoenix just looks at the coffee and just shakes his head. <laughs> Phoenix, you know exactly why I drink coffee. Oh, I know. I know. And she just presses a button on the monitor, and you guys see one half of the ship just covered in graffiti that is just gorgeous in look. Yeah. Wait, is that a new... When the yeah. hell did you go outside? Seriously. Despite how much coffee you drink, you have to sleep sometime. <laughs> when do I sleep? When does this happen? I have no memory of this. Well, that's because you were sleeping. It's about now that Dee walks in the room and she's all strapped up and ready to go. She's got her pack, which looks really empty. And she just kind of walks in. She's like, okay, who needs what? Do we have a shopping list? Uh, really. I think we have everything. Uh, well, food, always. Rations, they're kind of a... That's what we're gonna get. I'm talking about the stuff that I get. Um, I'm running low on metallic blue. Okay. Have we ever spent some time rainy, perhaps? Go ahead, go to a Tycho station. I wasn't sure if you carry anything around you to keep yourself safe. Uh, have any of you may have visited in the past Tycho station? That's a good question. Um, got these hands. I think Des probably did just to visit yeah. her sister one time to bitch about her mother. I have not. I definitely have not. Yeah, no. I figured D never came here. Uh, so Des, you would know that Tycho station does have their own security. Uh, it's one of the largest station. They need to keep certain things in check. Um, as for the reliability, some say that yeah, they do a good job. Some uh, would currently argue that not so much. Uh, but there's indeed uh, some station station rules. Uh, obviously, as any other place on in a system, just straight up murdering somebody is like very frowned upon right um, but s similar rule apply across the system for most things uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, some people will carry on, on, on themselves uh, some weaponry form of weapon weaponry uh, but I got all the weapons most, I need right here yeah most the average denizen on the station probably doesn't have a pistol on them all, all time, right? So. Um. Oh, oh uh, Phoenix is going to just take out a knife spinning around their uh, fingers before handing the handle towards uh, D says, just in case. Appreciate it. Uh, and she, she'll, like, lift up a pant leg and tuck it in her boot right next to her own dagger just so she's got an extra... <laughs> <laughs> uh, B, do you want any uh, uh, new murals or anything in your room? No, the sunset's really nice. I'm kind of digging it. Fair. All right. Well, why don't you get me some stencil paper anyway so that I can cut out some new stuff to try at some point. Okay. All right. Fantastic. All right. Talking, exceeding the ship. Uh, you are able to find your way around the place. It's fairly well labeled, and it is a very, a very busy station. Uh, there's a lot of ships coming in and out. Uh, and typically, docking fee are something, especially for, to refill your ship. And the longer you time, uh, time you spend here, uh, the more expensive it gets for a crew. Uh, but you've been assured that this will be covered as part of 
the reason that you're here. So you don't have to worry about that, which is a good thing. Uh, I don't like people covering our docking fees. It makes me feel mm -hmm. obligated. Indebted. Obligated, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. My sister owes me. That's almost worse. Yeah. How does mm -hmm. how does family owe one another? That's. <laughs> oh, my friend. <laughs> Just, yeah, I wouldn't know much about that either. Um, somebody got cash for me because if I'm gonna need to look for just, stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And on, on Tyco, they accept all currency, either it's the Earth dollar, the Martian dollar, or like the Belter script. They're gonna accept it regardless. Uh, Lola just like digs like into a pocket for a moment, pulls out like three Earth dollars like a handful of Martian dollars and roots down and pulls out like a doubloon and puts it on top. <laughs> I Riff uh, just hands D his card and says, here's the pin code, have fun, don't care. <laughs> Riff knows what he's doing. <laughs> yep. Riff D's knows face. what's happening. D's face. <laughs> <laughs> like, noted. <laughs> Let's hand the poor kid Earther all of the dollars. That's smart. <laughs> uh, I... Hi, Rit. Riff's a sap for someone who could use a pick me up, so have mm. fun. <laughs> I will put this to good use. Thank you. I mean, Riff or ended you the car doesn't mean there's money on it. <laughs> <laughs> there's exactly four whatever monies is on my sheet on there. <laughs> Just just looks at this and goes, I'll take care of expenses for the ship and no one's looking like before. You've already paid for everything I asked for, Des. At least all the things to keep the ship running. D like struck gold. D's real happy right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Request D something sweet for me. On it. Oh, something... dude, there's... Oh, go ahead, Phoenix. I'm not Phoenix, I'm Lola. Oh. <laughs> That's Phoenix. You need more coffee, Cap. <laughs> there's a chestnut coffee here. That's really good. Get me, like, eight pounds of it. <laughs> Got it. I should start taking notes. Um... Oh, I'll just send it to you. And she yeah. goes on to her um, wrist. Yeah. Communicator and sends it to you. You, you all have a communicator yeah. device that you can just something tart to match the something sweet, please. Okay. Sweet tarts, got it. That used to be hey. a thing on Earth a million years ago. Oh, that also reminds me. If you can pick up any pots, I'll send you the um, information. I'm going to actually see if I can work on a farming droid so we can possibly have fresh food. I've been meaning to make one of those. The food on here isn't that bad. I mean, it's better than Ma's. That's for sure. Fresh food? What are you talking about? We already hit the three major food groups. Beans, bacon, and lard. Still better than the crap I had to eat back home. <laughs> Peter's like, oh, maybe not. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Des, what do you know about this sister of yours that we have to go meet? Well, she's the. How should I say this nicely? She is like me with coffee, but with scientific discovery. It's one reason why she's here. Why she find something. Exhausting. Why do you think I am so tired all the time? Oh, I thought that was our fault. No. It's after years of recovering of having family members who are extremely smart, or the fact that my mother is a admiral in the Martian Navy. So you can have an idea of what kind of upbringing I've had. Yeah, I mean, really. Lola. Boy, and now you fly this bad boy? Your mom must be pissed. <laughs> I mean, 
almost dying out in space, saying, hey, I need mental recuperation. Can I take that ship? Okay, thank you. And that's how Phoenix joined up with us. Then I found you all. Yep. yep. And then I painted the ship. <laughs> I'm just making nice. sure you all are safe and sound wherever we go. I mean, it's also one, one reason why Lola always deals with my mother's communications. Yeah. Speaking of which, you have three missed calls. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I'll deal with that later. Anyways, you know, my sister. You know, eventually she's going to come to me, right? If she can't reach you. Oh, no, it's fine. I always send a response. Okay. He does. They do. And they are amazing. And I love the replies from them. Anyways, um, yeah, my sister, uh, she's eccentric. Just don't get her talking about her science and whatever project, because we're not going to hear the end of it. It's just going to go on and on and on. Maybe for two hours, three hours, I don't know. Until she realizes she's gone off on a tangent. So good luck meeting my sister. And Des starts walking towards where we need to go. All right. Fantastic. Him. I'm gonna follow suit, but I want to keep an yeah. eye on everything we pass and start looking for any like back alley esque places where I can go get stuff way cheaper than if we go to like mm. the commissary. All right. Um, I just kind of want to clock it on the way there, so I know where to go on the way back. Okay, fan, no problem. Uh, question D: Is it your first time in any belter station? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. So, you are very, very, very much Earthborn. Yeah. Uh, one of the few things that you notice as soon as you step out on docking is the, in a few case, a very, very difference in height for the people that are born on the belt. Ever since gravity is near zero all the time, people tend to grow much, much taller. Seeing an 8 foot tall person with elongated limbs is not unusual around here. Uh, that's probably one of the first things that will strike you right away. There's a lot of dock worker moving things around, shipmen from various crew. Uh, a lot of the, there's a lot of belters around with various tattoos uh, that display them very, very proudly uh, and around the station. Uh, where you are currently at, at the docking do going towards what is m more or less a bit more central and it takes probably you a bit of adjustment going from ship gravity to uh, the, the my, low my, uh, spin gravity generated on the station but with your mag mood no problem and you're still be able able to get around uh, you do see a lot uh, going towards more the central part of the station, going through the tram and all that. There's uh, one variety of uh, shop establishment that will sell you all sorts of ware. There's bar, restaurant, what brothel, whatever you need to make your time out on sh quote unquote shore a bit more enjoyable. Uh, it reminds, pro probably reminds you of the more populated and enjoyable, I'd say more enjoyable section of Earth, but you probably grew up in a shithole like Baltimore. <laughs> yeah, I, I grew up basically in a- I, I'm sorry, but in the Expanse universe, Baltimore is an absolute Baltimore, shithole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's... Yeah, I grew up, I basically grew up on the yeah, streets. Yeah, you, you grew up on probably less than basics in the streets, yeah. Um, so it is, big change for you. Uh, there's, it is l fairly lively, um, yet very, very clean in the design on purpose because on a space station you don't want too much rubbish around, or at least in theory. Uh, you have not really traveled anywhere else. 
Um, but are you are you following them towards? Oh yeah, no, I'm gonna stay okay. kind of like in the middle of the pack because I'm <laughs> definitely way freaked out by one how clean everything is, yeah, and two how busy it is, and like there are mm-hmm. people like just laying in the middle of the road half dead. Yeah, I'm just like, okay, this is weird. I'm staying with them, but I'm very much still mm-hmm. because of how observant I am clocking everywhere i can hide everywhere i can buy the stuff we need anywhere that looks a little shady Mm because that's much more my speed that kind of stuff yeah and there's no sense of day and time and what time of day it may be because well the way the station work it doesn't really work well here uh give me if you're looking for like more like shady like side spot uh, let's do our first roll tonight okay what am i rolling let me uh, can you give me a Perc- um, let's do a perception seeing test. Okay. So roll your 3d6. Okay. And if you have any, per- uh, add your perception score. And if you have the focus in seeing, add that as well. Okay, let me look at my perception. Okay. Let me look at my focuses. All right. So it's just my perception. I don't have a focus for it. But I do have a whole bunch of extra perception, so. I said roll 3d6. One of them being the like weird one, right? Okay. That's correct. Alright, so we got uh okay, so uh 12 total. Twelve. I rolled a six on the special dice. Okay. Uh, and I rolled two threes plus three on top of that. So Okay. 12, 15. 15? That's good. And you roll above above uh, four on your drama die with double. That will generate some stun point, which will increase the turn by one. Okay. Um. And you can uh, you have access of a very a list of uh, observation uh, stun, uh, general exploration stun. You have how many point on that dice? Four. Uh, on the special on the drama dice was yeah. a six. Was a six. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nice. So what I would recommend you probably use like two of those points on like speed demon. So whatever time it would have taken you to just clog things around, because you're so used to observe things and mm-hmm. get things really done really quickly. Uh, you're taking half, half the time that you like most people that are not familiar with the station at all would take. Um, uh, and you do find a couple. I would call them shop. It's more like there's like a little store and trance. There's people doing business here that probably would sell whatever you need. Uh, and at possibly a reasonable price. They don't seem to be as frequented as the other one. But that may just be because other type of business may be going there. Right? And gotcha. We also did just recently receive a $50 donation, so that will actually give you, like, f- I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, and I remember my incentive. Uh, Thank you for donating, y'all. Yeah. yeah. I think it will it's give you... Uh, I'm just gonna do that. It's gonna be easier for me. It's bold of me to assume that I'm gonna remember my own incentive. Uh, uh, it's five shared FP. Yeah, five shared FP, so I'm just gonna mark it here. So that you have... Um, Fortune point, which doubles up as uh, all the like QR and your help uh, point available to you if you wish to impact your dice roll. Fantastic. So it's one each, or is it five each? It's it's five that you can spread around all of you. So as outside of your own pool that you have, uh, you can use those. Okay. All right, so yeah, you do. Uh, you do easily find uh, like some spot that you would be able to easily purchase whatever you need. Cool. I think um, Lola is also a a poor Earther <laughs> uh, from the middle of nowhere and mm-hmm. might notice these generalized discomfort um, and be like. It's all right, kid. You get used to it after mm-hmm. a while. It's a different standard of living. They this don't really know what we've been through. 
This is real weird. <laughs> yeah, it's real weird. Why is everything so fucking clean? <laughs> I think it's something to do with, like, the same reason we try to keep the ship clean, like, dust and things like that causes problems in the electricals. Lola, you've been on the ship for a while, right? Yeah. You've probably traveled to other station, correct? Mm -hmm. You would know from general experience that Tycho Station is a bit of an oddball <laughs> in terms. If, if you have been on Eros before uh, it went A-Wire, you would know for sure that this place is really reminding you of Earth in some way. There's absolutely a goddamn potato in a dump. For the, on the belt. Uh, so not every station are like that. And not every sector of the stations are always like that. Uh, yeah. The belt usually get crapped on a lot. They're not all like this. Yeah. Not all of them. Some of them are more like home. In a way. A bit of a, you know, realistic grime. Rust and the like. This is... Something else. How, how much would I know uh, about the history of this station by chance? Uh, roll me. It would be an intelligent test. I Ooh. think uh, intelligence. What would be the proper? It would probably be history. History, yeah. Just as a uh, general. And that also depends on my own personal goddamn knowledge of Tycho Station. Uh, that would be a 11 with a 2 on the drama dice. 11 with a 2. Mm -hmm. You would not probably know much from that role. Uh, <laughs> you know that, you know, it's one of the largest station belt uh, associated with Tyco manufacturing at most, but. There's not a lot that you know. Currently, with that 11, I'd say that you wouldn't know that the current station director is Fred Johnson. I would or would not. You would know that. Whether or not the name that. itself rings a bell outside of that, uh, with that 11, probably not. Okay, never mind then. But... It's been a, it's one of the stations that's been around for a while. Basically, kid, they got enough stuff here that yeah. it's not a big deal if some of it goes missing. Yeah, it, it's a it's a big hub where a lot of things go in and out. Um, so, and you can just tell easily by looking around yourself as you're walking and talking that it's a busy station. Uh, but eventually, you do. Uh, make your way towards uh, where the quote-unquote Mormon office would be and to meet uh, with the Apostle. You do uh, first uh, des see your sister outside of, of the office. Just probably gave her a heads up that you're going to be coming in like mm -hmm. soon, so she's waiting for you. T it takes a lot for coming. Um, we just didn't know who to turn to, and st uh, station security has not been optimal recently with the recent projects. And I figure, with you and your, she looks at all, and the rest of you like inners, uh, crew, that you may be able to have at least some skills amongst yourself that you could be able to help. Well, you know me. Somehow I'm able to fix things that other people mess up. And she you just see she gives this like stare right at Calypso, like yeah, you remember some of the mistakes you've made that I've cleaned up for you over the years. Oh, especially yeah. with mom. She she uh Calypso remembers. Um But yeah, let me just uh introduce you to um uh, quickly the person that actually asked for help with this. And she leads you um essentially the, uh, the, the first part is like the i'm trying to remember the proper word for it 
like the first part when you like enter into a church like the first little entrance part before you actually go into ch church proper whatever the name of that is uh, the it looks foyer the foyer yeah it looks it, it is really brightly lit and very it's you, you can see that they put a lot of money in that part <laughs> and all sort of like imagery around and she takes you around to uh, a lar um, much larger room um, it's a, the room itself is very large well lit some carpet some simulated wood uh, paneling and bookshelf uh, the bookshelf itself seems to be holding one of the largest collection that you will see around the station of real books which is not a thing that people do tend to have a lot around just because they take a lot of space uh, but it's there uh, the, the air is, is slightly stuffy the smell of like the new carpet and a, a bit of cigar smoke uh, there's a large wooden veneer desk uh, that dominates the end of the room there's a family picture on the, on one of the wall and uh, as a painting of Joseph Smith kneeling and holding a uh, golden plate as an to an angel above him and there's another painting of like a Mormon temple uh, back on earth at a sunrise it's it presents a lot of the death welt right and behind the desk and right in front of it, there's several chairs uh, all leather bound very well made and behind the desk uh, you do see a very very well kept uh, man based on his height and build you assume most likely an inner from earth uh, short hair nice suit and he, ri he rises and gesture all of you well welcome and thank you for coming i know it's rather unusual but i've invited you as well she mentioned that you may have uh, specific talents that may be able to help with a whole situation here. Um, um, by, uh, by the way, I'm Apostle Birch. Uh, very nice to meet all of you. And he's looking around to see who may be in charge of your little troop. Um, Rift just points to Dez. <laughs> Other side, Lola Des, is also Des. pointing at Des. I sneak up behind Lola. Lola, Lola what the fuck is that smell? <laughs> Des just sighs. Um, technically, I'm the captain of my ragtag group, so. What is it you need from us? Alright, so. Uh, well, we recently, two of our most important scientists have. Dr. Uh, Brangenholm and Matthew Seri have both been working on the naval project for a bit before a station executive decided to use it for their own purpose and uh, they've been working on this and since that we've been trying to reassign them on other projects here and there. Uh, they've just recently went missing without any leaving anything behind really and we first thought that it was maybe a, like on their own volition but with Dr. Sirius disappearance shortly after it started to look like a little bit of a pattern either somebody's trying to sabotage our projects or they want our scientists for other purpose I'm not sure we of course have concerned that Fred Johnson or the OPA may and may have some their hands in it and he looks at you all which are invisibly all inners you know uh, so we figure we would hire external help just to investigate the matter uh, you pay him enough Pain. Like the first question you ask is like, did you pay them enough? Yes, we are. We financed the project very well, and our scientists are paid appropriately. 
that doesn't answer the question appropriately versus enough is like kind of a relative spectrum of like you know if a scientist or whoever in a situation doesn't feel like they're getting paid well enough for the work that they're doing they tend to kind of like you know maybe cut corners or start selling secrets on the sly in order to like start getting things and that gets into a whole mess of like black market bullshit start a riot then, in union station you know at the mention of black market bullshit d immediately hides behind literally everyone and just tries to make herself as small as possible <laughs> oh riff you know. will just get in front of you for you yeah. just you know people start selling secrets if they don't feel like they're valued which we understand uh, it's why we pay them generously if that's a preferred term for you okay. Aster, the I just make amount sure itself you're... that is none of your concern I, do, 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 I don't care I'm just, you just make it it's you know ruling out possibilities it's how it goes well I mean there's pay but there's also how they're being treated do they get proper time to sleep recharge or is it just work 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 they do have a very flexible schedule in most time uh, we do encourage our team to be well rested in order to be more productive on a project. Okay. Well, do they have access to a union representative? They get, you know, legal counsel to speak to? Is insurance covered? R Rafiki, I'm so sorry. It's out of character. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. They do have representative if issue arise. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> you can so see it's that. more likely that they've been, you then, you know, step two. You They're probably that man is, dead. Then you can see that man is being very annoyed. <laughs> well, no sign have been shown that they may have passed. Uh, you muted, by the way. Mm -hmm. I pressed the button. Um, <laughs> we, we can get, we can discuss all of the corporate shenanigans later. Let's just. Get going. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, and I can provide you at least an initial little dossier about people. And he takes out his communicator and send it out to uh, on yours. As just a few basic information about the people. Uh, starting with Doctor Ragenholm, uh, who is this? And you see a picture of this tall, slender. Uh, person born way outside of the gravity well, so Belter for sure. Uh, in her case, uh, she, you see that she was born on Luda, so still within the inner, uh, inner section, so she's very, very tall, about 30 years old. Um, Dr. Brangall is an ECLSS, which is an environment, environmental control and life support specialist engineer. Which is one of the reasons why she was hired to build and work on the Navu, which was designed to be become a generation ship, so a good life support system. It's kind of useful when you're gonna tra be traveling for possibly a few generations in space. Uh, you don't see any family details. She appeared to be just like single, no family, uh, at least currently around. Uh, and she, uh, based on the dossier, she was last seen leaving her station in the Nova, Nova Project about three months ago, around like 2.24 p.m. Tycho station time. Uh, as for uh, Dr. Matero, uh, much uh, shorter man, a bit older from Earth, although it doesn't seem to show his age. Uh, short squat uh, even like for nerd like he's a brief like five four he's really short mm. uh jagged long uh, short hair with might be shorter than you d yeah like uh dark brown hard. eyes bushy eyebrows uh cleft jaw like you can see from the like the picture that you're able to pull from the com communication uh he was on board a uh, biochemist slash neurophysiologist, so a lot of other science things. 
uh, working along with the uh, fellow scientists. Uh, he is uh, married to a woman, a woman named Fiona Tan, and they have children. They all live on board Tycho Station. And he was last seen leaving the sta uh, the station and on, on, on there about three weeks ago, around 6.30 p.m. Tycho time. So, it turned out that they've not been disappearing like one after the other, uh, like at the same time, but you know, there's a, enough of a gap that some people may suspect foul play and patterns here and there. Mm. Is there any computers that they use personally that we can investigate? I mean, they had their own communication. A lot of the things were that they use on a daily basis were previously on board Nunavu, which is, as you've probably seen at other station, no longer there. Um, and you may have heard about the ship being hijacked, so... Um, as for other station, uh, station things, like personal computer, uh, they, they have like office, a little small office here that all the scientists share. And perhaps Dr. Dr. Siri had something at home, but uh, I would not be sure. Um, Where were they last seen by chance? Right here on board Tycho Station, um, just leaving the, the project itself. Like, they're, like they like the uh, ship has been hijacked, like a couple, like about, about like two, three weeks ago, and no. they were like, yeah. Um, if yeah, but yeah. Uh, you, so, you, you feel free to you can ask around our co-workers, they will maybe know a bit more than me. Yeah, is there any reason to think they might still be on board? Like, if you haven't seen, like, how big is this station? The station is fairly big. Like, it, uh, like the station, like, would have enough space to have, comf like, a, at a comfortable level, uh, a population of, like, 15,000 people. Uh, so it is a fairly large station, right? Gotcha. So it's like big enough to lose a person. Okay. Big enough to lose a person if something happened, yeah. Alright. Okay. So there's a chance they're still here. There's also a chance they're just floating out in space somewhere. Um, yeah. Either with or without a spacesuit. Uh, once the ship was hijacked, uh, they did clear all... Uh, Nevu personnel on board. Security station clear all personnel on board, claiming a radiation leak on which we all know by now very false. Well, we'll see what we can do. I am, I'm presuming there's no logs or cameras that's around that we could be able to perhaps monitor. As all this would be handled by Tycho security, which I've been less than helpful. Not surprising. But if you do have contact on board with security, be my guest. Security's your area, Phoenix. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's that's your thing. I think we should maybe go talk to the wife of the the shorter man, the squatter doctor. Uh, she might have some insights. Uh, that's kind of where I'm leaning because, sure, the scientist, the you know, the brickheads here probably know at least stuff about what's going on around here. But if we're talking like actually like what's going on behind the scenes personal life you know assuming he had a good relationship with his wife i don't know maybe he jumped ship and got himself a boyfriend and ran off back to earth or something yeah. why would anyone want to go back there uh, okay ran off to a different station i don't know all right well 
I can head to the security office. You all will be okay by yourselves. I'm gonna go shopping. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We're fine. We got it handled. I'm gonna go with them to go investigate because if I can get my hands on a computer, I can probably hack in, possibly. We'll see. And I have a great personality. <laughs> oh, good. That's why you're my XO. Oh. And that's, you know, I thought that's because I kept all your notes. And that. also why you're the XO. <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, uh, and break. <laughs> well, like I said, let me know if things go wrong on comms. I should be there okay. in and uh, yeah, a Phoenix head over to the security station. All right. So Phoenix is going towards security. Um, D, you're going to shop. I'm literally going to go buy everything on the list. And then I'm going to like lurk around and go like buy myself a new jacket with the credit card I was just given. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hey, D. Hey. While you're lurking and doing your thing, see if you can hit up any of the, you know, general spots, you know, the lurking spots, see if anyone might be talking about any uh, thing going weird around the station. Oh, yeah, no. Dee's going to have ears and eyes open looking specifically for anyone talking about the missing ship, talking about the missing people, mm -hmm. like just mm -hmm. clocking everything. Yeah. All right. All right. So, and Riff, Lola, and Des, you are what exactly doing again? Just to make sure. Make uh, sure. What was the name of the second doctor again? It started with an M. It it was Doctor. Let me just get that What's back that, to you. Matero? Uh, it was no. It was not. It started with a B. Uh, bring B. a home. Uh, bring home, and Doctor Siri. Matteo Siri. Matteo Siri. Yeah. Okay. Matteo Siri. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Siri. Okay. Or yeah, uh, Bregenholm, yeah. Yeah, Dr. Bregenholm and Mateo Siri. I, I, the the wife of Dr. Siri, I think we were going to go, is who I wanted to go talk to. Okay. All right. Lola and the ref and Death are going to see Dr. Siri's wife. Okay. Split the party. First split, rule of TTRPGs. Split the party. Yeah, hey, exactly. That's fine. That's the first <laughs> rule. We're chaos. We're no. chaos, that's what we are. Mm -hmm. Speaking it's of fun. chaos, you too can make it more chaotic by mm. upping the churn mm. by giving donations. <laughs> One of us already did that. do the thing. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I, 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 we received some donation that did uh, up the churn by two already, plus that roll. So, yeah. I'm just waiting until it reached 10 or maybe 30 within the game. That's going to be fun. I hope it reached 30 by the end of the game. Um, so, uh, let's do in the order that I have here on my side. Um, Phoenix, you're going to, uh, you're taking one of the essentially tram stem, which is just a, essentially a system of tube uh, that looks like a... Uh, uh, towards probably Tycho Station Security or in general vicinity. Uh, you, you like you, it's easy to it's easy to find. It's like everything is fairly well labeled around here. Uh, and you do manage to find a location of where said security desk would be. Or at least part of the office. Actual access to everything behind that's a different story, but yeah, yeah, so you, can, you Phoenix, can ask around. Phoenix would step forward to the front desk and say, hi, I'm here. Um, Hoy. Nice to meet you. I'm Phoenix. I'm here. Um, who's the uh, individuals that works some of the cameras around here who pays attention to security um, in this establishment? Why are you asking, Bretna? Well, let's just say uh, we have a, a missing person that we're trying to locate. And um, 
I know how some of these things work. They'll take out some uh, Martian dollars and slide it over. Mm. You and can make it worth your while. And you see in front of you like this uh, very tall, uh, uh, looks like darker skin uh, belter with smirking and all that. It looks at you, it looks at the dollar. Uh, give me a persuasion a communication persuasion test yeah okay uh, or uh, you can well unless you want to uh, either communication bargaining or just persuasion the target number will be because you are inner <laughs> because you are somebody that they don't know at all mm -hmm. uh, a target number will be 14. 14? Okay. Yeah. Oh, can I can I use fortune on that roll? You can absolutely 14. You can absolutely use fortune on that roll. So if you want for example, uh what what are your dice right now? My dice right now is a five, five, and a three, and I have a plus one for communication. Okay. Uh, that tree, is it on your drama die or on a different die? Uh, it's on my drama, uh, drama die. Okay. So, it, any dice that you will up, uh, for example, using your fortune point, if you want up to, for a four to a five, it will cost you five fortune point. Unless it's on the drama die, they will cost double. So, whatever number you're upping to, that's the amount of point that's going to cost you. Oh, okay. So if I were to increase it, I would have to turn one five into a six. Yeah. It'd be cheaper, right? Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll and if you it, it, and if you increase like, yeah, you're like you're increasing one of your five to a six, it's going to be mm -hmm. spending six point. Okay. Or you can uh, if you want to increase your drama die by like it's currently a four or two, a three, to a four, it would cost you eight, right? So. Yeah. All right. So you wow. spend six, stun point. It will increase the churn. Hey guys, I focus on fortune, that's for sure. <laughs> um, looks at you. I mean, we don't typically do that, but we can take a look for the right amount it takes the script. So you, we're looking for, well, like, do you have any time frame? I'm not obviously gonna be able to let you see everything but of course of course we know their uh, discretion is required there's a uh, perhaps just a uh, the past two or three days looking for two scientists uh dr Cersei and a uh, and dr bragging so it should have taken long hopefully. i'm assuming you transferred like the information from your communication device to uh, that person's yes. take a take a look you can see on the screen like on the side I'd say it's a screen, but it's more like a transparent display. Mm -hmm. Take a look. And look for like just essentially scanning around. And while it's in the scan. So, Baretna, why, why are you looking f uh, for them? Are they family of yours or something? Actually, no. I'm just here on a task from... Um from someone close by. I'm part of a new crew that just came in. You probably recognize our ship, uh, the Tiamat. It sticks out like a sore thumb. So we're here to all right, all right. definitely, definitely here to uh, assist on an endeavor. So right. just making sure everyone's okay and, and no one's hurt. So you haven't heard anything about missing parties regarding mm -hmm. these two individuals, correct? And Has anyone been reported? Oh, I mean, of course, you know, if there's any missing people on, on the station, the people sometimes disappear all the time. Or they just go air wall aside. Oh, I'm going to take the next shuttle outside. It's not something we can always control, right? Mm. Uh, but yeah, let's let's look for your friend. And so are you just looking check. within the past couple? <laughs> hmm? I thought I wish there was an insight check. Uh, it, would there... be, it would be an uh, empathy test, which is under the uh, communication, I do believe. Okay. Uh, ah. Actually, uh, or is it under? Yeah. Just, just give me like a general uh, communication test. Communication. Or actually, okay. uh, perception and petty. Sorry. 
perception. Perception? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, and if you have the empathy focus, you can uh, do that as well. Nice. Okay. Six, six, five plus two. Five. Twelve, seventeen. Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, so, uh, what do you, uh, you get from him? He, he's there doing his job. He appreciates the script. He's looking, but he's not going to be... He's not actively trying to be dishonest with you or mm. try to, to to scam you as much. No, you, you gave him probably a decent, a decent amount, just... Alright, so you're looking for, like, past few days, past week, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, I got a ping on your little uh, doctor man here, but the other one, I no clue. I can look further, but you know, it would be extra work. Mm, extra work. Well, how can I make this worth your while? I don't know how much you can afford, but uh, mm, let's, let's, let's just say let's. I don't know. Double what you provided, and we can talk about it, right? Contribution to Taiko Sikiri. Of course, of course. Uh, I am affluent, so I, yeah, I'm hoping that I could be able to, or make a role to be able to provide that. Yeah, uh, just do communication bargaining. Okay. Uh, what was your, uh, what was your, what was on your uh, inside die? Could you give me one? inside die uh, for the drama was five. Five, okay. Mm -hmm. And it was a six hole test, okay. All right, three here. Okay, three, thirteen, and communicate. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen, yeah. Like just, yeah, we're good with that, right? Just double that. Look a bit further, and you more or less obtain a, a similar uh, information. You do get a bit of a bit more footage. Uh, you do see uh, Doctor Siri ta talking to. Um, a group of three people, like uh, a, a man and two women, at least woman presenting. Um, you, you don't you, you do capture some feature around, uh, around them. They're very uh, like generally like, better looking type. You're not sure if they're former OP or not. There's no visible tattoos, um, but by the general length of their body, uh, especially when you look at footage around. Uh, Dr. Anna, yeah, they appear about, you know, roughly same body type, very lanky. Uh, uh, one of them appear a bit shorter, but shaky a bit as well. But yeah, you, you do get a, a description of the... So, uh, you just like send you like, you know, just little clips of, you know, that those moments. Not the whole section of footage. Wow, G good luck with that and... If you're more than willing to fund Taiko Security again, you know what to visit, right? Of course. By chance, you wouldn't happen to recognize who these three individuals are that this doctor is speaking to, do, do you? God, if I know, I don't know any right now on the station. Mm. Alright? That's a shame. Until today, I did not even know who you are. <laughs> oh, well, hopefully it stays that way. Nice talking to you. And we'll give away a uh, uh, nod before heading out and uh, yeah. meeting up with the rest of the group. Yeah, wait in there. <laughs> All right. And he shake his head and just go back to his business, you know, pocket this, the script. Like, no, nobody on the station is none the wiser. He just made, you know, a lot of money that way. Awesome. Uh, D, you on your shopping spree, right? Uh, anything you're like, so you're essentially going through like place to place. You're muted, by the way, friend. Sorry, the dogs <laughs> are fighting and I'm muted. <laughs> so, <laughs> here. Uh, so I'm gonna pop into like a bunch of little stores and just kind of want to go to the more quiet ones where people are more apt to just be chit chatting. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just kind of want to like slip in and out. I want to listen to any conversations that I'm hearing. Um, and I need to pick up uh, a box of chocolates, a box of lemon cookies, eight pounds of chestnut coffee, <laughs> uh, 
as much metallic blue spray paint as I can find, but I also want to look for like a purple glittery kind, just for a thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> stencil paper and a really nice like purple leather crop jacket. All right. So just because it, I, I, if I had a lot of time, I would just make you go through every goddamn store and I've gonna <laughs> buy everything. But for sake of searching around and things like, all right. So we're gonna do a few. I just kind of want to do my. I just kind of want to do my like super observant, listen to everything, but stop as many places as possible and make it look like I'm deliberately shopping, but I'm really trying to overhear what's going on. All right. So to what if or what are you gonna overhear? Uh, give me a perception hearing for that. Okay. Uh, perception hearing is just perception, right? Yeah, unless you have the, the hearing focus. Uh, I don't. It's just. Perception. I don't have any. I don't think I have any focuses under perception. I just have bargaining. Um, so straight perception roll. Yeah. All right. Uh, that is eight, eleven, seventeen, and there's this another six on my uh, drama die. Seventeen total. And there's a six on your drama die. Any double at all? Uh, n no, I don't think so, right? There's nothing to double. I have a plus three to perception, and I rolled a five and but, three oh, and a six. Okay, on your dice, it's no double. Mm. So, what are you trying to pick up exactly on, in, in uh, like, conversation around? Anything station-related or disappearance-related, things like that? Uh, one of the things you pick up about, for sure, because it's been talk of the whole system for a while, is the arrows instead of all the people that were there are essentially now part of uh, Jupiter because the uh, Esther, uh, when a uh, wire travel on its own and crash landed into Jupiter. As, um, as for recent disappearance around the station, um, you don't catch about specific disappearance, but you do catch talk. And they are like, I want to say, I mean, shady people would probably be the best way to uh, describe them. Uh, a rather unusual people's talking, uh, talking people around the Mormon area and the Nova Project uh, that gave a general security feel but not Tycho Station security feel. Uh, there's no actual like name of where they they moved from. They did not like display fully who they were. But uh, there was some uh, shady and more or less stalking people and some of them are like worried that you know there's gonna be more bo uh, things happening, especially since one of them is not necessarily a belter, but she's you know considered amongst them because just the nature of uh, living in Logi. Uh, that some people may be just taking people away. Uh, it's not, and yeah, uh, but they've been essentially going around here. Um, just being real sketchy and going around those districts, every every scientist, uh, like those sci their science lab and all that, uh, and the docks. Okay. Um, yeah, I will just I will clock that and make note of it, and then mm -hmm. get with everybody when we all get back together. Yeah. Uh, any so any other things that you wanted to like observe because that 17 was pretty damn good no i was specifically looking for like what might be going on in the okay. background that might give us some leads so okay. i think that's probably that's about all that she really right. needs and they're gonna just buy their stuff buy themselves some snacks and make their way back okay and just give me a general bargaining roll to see how well off or how little you get scammed um being okay. a, a short inner on a station in Bell. 
Okay, let me look in because I do have that. So that's. Uh, I rolled a double. I rolled double threes. Okay. Plus another three is nine. Nine. Plus the two for bargaining is eleven. Plus another one on the drama die, so twelve. Twelve. Twelve, and I rolled double threes. Okay. Uh, you feel. It's hard to tell, right? You 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 know what value of things are on Earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, the value of things here on the station. Some things may be a bit more scarce, and just because it's not a, as much abundant resource. You do feel from that that you probably got a decent deal. Uh, Riff is gonna have to deal with the bill later on, so it's all good. Yeah, as soon as I'm all done and I start making my way back, I'm going to take, like, my little sweatshirt off and toss it in my bag and throw my new jacket on. Dog. Roll up the sleeves. It looks real good. Awesome. Yeah. You, um... You are carrying a lot of things right now. <laughs> but Yeah, no, I I would have had them send the coffee, like, to the ship yeah. and, and stuff like that. Just all delivery of available, supplies. right? All of the supplies I would have made sure were getting delivered to the ship immediately. Yeah. And I'll just throw my jacket on and my snacks in my bag. Fantastic. All right. Uh, Lola, Riff, and Dez, you are going for Dr. Siri or Dr. and the other one? Uh, Dr. Siri's doc wife. Dr. Dr. Siri's, Siri's wife. wife. Yeah. All right. So, all right, uh, you you know that they live around uh, their little section where the Mormon church was. So you are, you're able to get like a, an address or what works for like district address and all that. Uh, and yeah, you, you are without any too much issue, you're able to find uh, where Dr. Siri uh, Formerly live at least. Um, you communicate, and the door slide open, and you see this uh, tall, um, taller than Doctor Sir Martian woman. Hello. Can I help you? Yeah. Um, apologies to disturb you, but we're here making inquiries uh, about uh, your husband, Doctor Siri. And she looks at you up and down. Well, you know Tycho Station. So no, we are exactly private are investigators. Give me a communication persuasion test. Just because okay. while she would be visibly on edge, uh, like her husband disappeared and all that okay. just recently, right? Right. Yes. We're private investigators that have been contracted by the um, the science team your husband worked for. Uh, okay, that is... And I have a three in communication. Okay. So that's going to be uh, six plus five is 11. I got a three on the drama die, so that's uh, 14. And then I have a three in communication, so six, so 17. All right. Um... She look around. I just, I just sign you to come in, and it's very like humble where like it's there's no, like a main like living space there with a kitchen attached. It's all there, and two other uh, three other doors that are most likely like bedroom and uh, lavatory, like a bathroom and things like that. Lovely home. You've been decent amount of space for station living we, we may do uh, so you're saying that you are looking for my husband the church I heard you I'm assuming yes I'm Exo Lola of the Tahamut this is uh, Captain Dez and that's our engineer uh, Grip alright Griff yeah. do, do, um, do you have any news or We've, we, well, we, we've just begun our investigations, but as I said, the, the 
science team that your husband worked for uh, has contracted us to investigate his disappearance along with the disappearance of a uh, another scientist that he worked with. Dr. Um, Riff, what was his name? Uh, Bragginholm. Bragginholm, yeah. Uh, they've both gone missing. Uh, we've got, you know, uh, we've got in, we're, we're a specialized group. We've got a security uh, specialist who's looking into it from the security angle. We've got a uh, kind of street level investigator who's investigating at the kind of the, the base level of for rumors and likes on the street. Uh, but we're kind of the, I guess, we're, we're, we're the door knockers and we're here to, to kind of check and see if you might have any information. Um, but before we get that, I, I do, of course, want to check in and see how are you doing? How, how are you doing it? I, I understand that you know, your husband is missing. I, I, I'm sure it can't be uh, exactly pleasant. We're, I mean, the children are holding up. Uh, hopefully, result, uh, people will find him soon, or at least have some news. Um, but that's, that's why we're here. That's what we're hoping to find. Um, can you tell us anything about the last couple of days before he went missing? Like, was he acting more nervous than usual? Was he meeting with unusual people that you hadn't seen before? Uh, well, I know it was acting a bit a bit unusual, especially like a few months prior to his disappearance of one of his colleagues. And he, he did mention that there was some strange people around the Nauvoo, but... Um, Did he describe these people at all, or, or say why they were strange? Uh, they were, they just seemed to be, like, trying to stalk his movement, and one of them apparently approached him to work on different scientists, a different project, but oh. the, the pay on Nauvoo is very well, so... Uh, like, they were trying to poach him. Kind of thing. In a way, he, scientists, scientists of his caliber, are not exactly uh, fully available everywhere. Uh, but he did seem to be a bit nervous around. But, uh, we would not be right, especially with everything that's going on. Did he um, mention anything about like? what kind of project this person approached him about? Like, did they go into details or was it just more of an offhand kind of a thing? If they mention it, he did not share that information with me, no. Okay. It seemed to have been okay. something in his line of work. Um, so did your husband have any um, close friends, uh, compatriots, people he was particularly close to at work or outside of work, uh, individuals that he, other than yourself, that he might have confided into? I mean, my husband was a very well-liked and respected member of the community, did attend the service regularly, although I would not call him a devout believer. Um, and honestly, I'm not a big fan of most... None of you are Mormons, right? No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not personally a big fan of their whole belief in policy system uh, and as women in the clergy it's, they have a weird thing about us right uh, but for the most part he was a very well liked member of the community so he had a few friends like anybody that lived around for long enough okay. a few right. fellow scientists mo uh, Did, did he, he have anywhere perhaps... in... Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, did he perhaps leave any um, computer behind here that he used for personal reasons? He, most of the things he was working on were toward his personal communicator. Um, I looked around, I didn't find it. Mm. But, um... hmm. All right. I don't know. Uh, honestly, I did not, you know, search around the entire 
location to see if there was anything hidden in it. And if you look around it, it'd be difficult to really hide something unless you like rip out the entire panel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, can I have um, basically lack of a better word his um, coordinates for his uh, communicator? I might try to see if I can uh, track him that way, possibly. So she would be able to give you like communicator number and essentially like the equivalent of a phone number, but for interplanetary com. Um, she grant you that, but uh, I yeah, try to. She was gonna look at that. All message that have been sent, just no response. Okay. So either his communicator is offline or. Did he have any frequent haunts here on the station? Like, um, you know, bars. Places he like to go. Yeah, bars, restaurants, uh, bookstores, libraries. Most of his time, his time was either spent at work, service here and there, or here, here with family as for okay. a regular location. Uh, not, um, not much into drinking. Uh, each their own. Hmm. Um, how old are your children, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 17 and 13. Okay. I was wondering if it would be worthwhile to maybe ask them a few questions, see if they've seen anything, you know? Hmm. Kids are smart, and sometimes they, hmm. you know, see more than you intend yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, if of course it would be all right with you if we talk with your children if not i completely understand this is probably a very difficult time for all well, of you they're currently at school right now but that's fair it seems to be like the very lively aspect of the day right on station so mm -hmm. it would be like school time and things like that Respectable. Valid. Um, okay. All right. So, devoted family man. Mostly cut his time between here, work, service. Mm -hmm. Hobbies? Any particular hobbies? Anything? You like Just... puzzles? Okay. You're right. Wow. He's a nerd. Great. Uh, through and through. Um, I'm just trying to get a sense of... Uh, if there is anyone outside, because, you know, that his work is the place that hired us. And if this mm -hmm. is connected to his work, I'm afraid that individuals we, we might talk to there might be compromised is the thing. Um, so I was starting with like you and seeing to try to branch out to see if there's anyone we could talk to beyond that uh, who might have more information. And we could probably try the, the church to try to, to see if anyone at the service mm -hmm. might have anything. But other than that, our best bet might be to, to throw it back to his workplace. He seems yeah. to have been pretty pretty devoted to his work. Um, I don't know. I, I've kind of run down my questions. Uh, Riff, Des, you got anything? Not that I can think of at the moment. You hit everything I was thinking of. Um, man, we'll we'll find him. Um, I think I think next place would be uh, checking where he worked. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, one last thing. Did he have a habit of uh, bringing his work home with him, or did he keep kind of a work life separate balance? We have a. Uh policy of work-life balance separate at home. Good policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very good policy. Right. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, and again, apologies. Yeah. We're going to do everything we can to yeah. try and bring him back. And she provided her own coordinate if there's anything that comes back from it uh, that you can communicate with her directly as well. We'll keep you posted on yeah. what's going on. All right. 
are you communicating any of your finding amongst yourself like uh, like between like your crew all of, of which communicate on yeah just make sure that we have communication that information is getting to the other two all right yeah so uh because i have the clips on my communicator yeah but uh, so i think phoenix would send the images and the clips over to the remaining group stating uh, we have possible visuals and then show the clips all right so, oh you're a muted friend yeah. d hasn't said anything to anyone because d does not love the communicator thing <laughs> at all so as soon as they walk out of the house i'm standing right there <laughs> <laughs> you've been so much talking to them well, I mean, I knew where they were, but I yeah. wasn't going to, like, interrupt and yeah. knock on the door. So I'm just chilling outside. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Phoenix Phoenix was also heading uh, on the way towards their direction. So um, we probably would see them walking out as well. They would have been right next to D. They probably would have been, like, maybe, like, turning the corner as, as D, D was waiting outside of the, the door. But they would have seen them. All right. As well. So reconvening as mm -hmm. a crew. And while we're walking, I'm going to be like... So apparently there's a secondary security fo force that's like fucking with people. Yeah, that's not a surprise. No, especially when there's so many interesting projects on this station. Yeah, we may have, there might be something there. There's a lot of people talking about it. People going missing, like people being worried about getting taken some shit about Jupiter. And I'll just like relay all of all of the things, but I would want to say it in person and not over comms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Who was some of the individuals that were reporting this information? They may be... It's just people talking in the stores and stuff. They ain't gonna talk to nobody that looks anything remotely like security. Hmm. I wonder if they may have a... Um idea who these individuals are no i was trying to listen and i don't think they really know they're just it's new people that are around that are kind of spooking everybody hmm. yeah and, and honestly it smells like a cop and i'm not here for that so yeah. and you've seen them like you from what you've got around they've been seen around like the research location here and there around the station and a lot of around the docks as well so they're, they're lurking in pretty high-profile places, so... That gives me an idea. Mm -hmm. Actually. I'm all ears. Well, if these people... Um, uh, if these people have been lurking around the station, like you say, D, and uh, they've been taking these scientists, there's a pretty good... Uh, there's a pretty good chance that they might still have their eyes on another one of the scientists if we can squirrel out who that is amongst the co-workers back in that project we might be able to use them as bait i don't know that they're that they've taken any of the scientists just there there's a lot of suspicion like nobody's really seen anything other than them lurking around so i mean it's possible but there's no hard evidence like along those lines it's just they're creeping people out well, if someone's taken someone and we've got people missing, there's a possibility there might be a connection there. And if there's a connection there, then we might be able to use someone as bait to at least uh, figure it out. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to clarify, the images uh, that are the clips that were shown, do the three individuals look like somebody of like a security clientele? Uh, so security clientele is a very broad term right uh, some of them do look like they, they could be some muscle for sure uh, based on their general build uh, the other one not so much but uh, yeah I, I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of these individuals in this picture is uh, uh, security we just we can kind of tell by their physique mm -hmm. here a bit more athletic so Maybe some uh some weight to this. Well, who would we like to choose as the bait? Do I look like a scientist to you? No. 
That's the thing, is I think we should go back to the workplace and find out if any of them, uh, the scientists back there have been having individuals creeping up on them, kind of a thing. Use them as bait, you know. Because look at us. The most, out of all of us, the person who looks the most like a scientist is either going to be Dez with, you know, her robot, or Riff with his grease. And I don't think either <laughs> of us really, um, meet the match of what they're looking for. Plus, if they've had their eyes on these people, they know who's in there. They know it. And we're the unknown factor here. We're the face in the crowd, kind of a thing. So... This is a good idea. I mean, we could just be loudly poking the bear. That would work, too. That's also fair, you know. You know, it's also fair. Whisper to a couple of people, get real loud while we're talking to the scientists so people over here. We don't need to put an innocent person up for bait when, you know, we can just make ourselves loudly visible. Mm -hmm. Though I hate that idea and I hate that I came up with it. We would have anything to worry about. You know, that is why, D, that I got one fist of iron and another of steel. <laughs> Des like just that. sighs. Oh, you're muted, I think. No, I'm muted. Shouldn't be. There we go. Okay. okay. I found your pain. It's at the ship. Just let me know. I also got you a little something, something. Thank you, D. I appreciate it. Also, Riff, thank you for the jacket. You're welcome. It looks great. It's real nice. I appreciate it. And I hand him his yep. card back. <laughs> All right. All right. No, no questions asked. Just puts it away. and I hand Lola her money, <laughs> of which I spent none. I put I'm it all in the card. I just kind of roll it back up and, like, tuck it into, like, it's like three of the bills go in a sock, the other three kind of go in the bra, and like the last <laughs> ones kind of like get the, the the doubloon like goes into the mask, kind of like, all right, no one's getting this shit. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna leave the uh, debacle to you all. You all are a bit more convincing than I am, so yeah. I'll, I'll be uh, making sure nobody. <laughs> well, almost Why don't everyone. You I mean, you could watch for whatever these other security forces, and if they aren't labeled as station security, you can always, like, rub elbows and say, hey. That was the goal. Game recognized game. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, in which case, let's uh, go give the bear a suppository, as Dee put it, um, and <laughs> see if they uh, come out to bite. I'm not sure if those were the exact words, but I get what you're saying. <laughs> you said you said something about one of these one of these scientists has like an older kid. Yeah. yeah. Before we leave, let me go talk to them. They're at school. So like, do you want to go to school? I mean, they got to get out of school sometime. It's fair. I don't know. I never went. This looks like uh, the clock on our communicator. Uh, what time is it, would you say? I'd be probably like early afternoon, the equivalent of like 2.30 Tycho station time. Okay. They gotta get out like very soon, generally. I see. Would Des have an idea, since she did go to school, um, about how long usually a school day is? They're probably gonna be in there for like another hour or two more. You know what, I'm gonna just call my sister real fast. And she just calls Calypso and goes, Uh, quick question. When do people get out of school here for the kids? It depends if around like four? Why? Oh, we have some questions for them because, you know, kids always see things that adults miss. All right. Okay, love I, you. Quick. <laughs> I'm assuming it's a very walk and talk type of station, right? Yeah. Not oh, just yeah. like a bunch of people just standing outside of this woman's door and being no, weird about it. No, definitely. Okay. 
This was definitely um, walk and talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I think in that interest, Lola is gonna kind of do what Lola does and rabble rouse a bit, like break from the crew and start kind of um, loudly throwing it out there that they're looking for these people. Um, kind of at various points, various areas in the station, kind of like, and, and generally being a little extra okay. about it. Maybe uh, <laughs> even to the point of maybe at times like having gathered a crowd maybe putting on some kind of spray paint performance, doing artwork kind of a thing. Um, You're doing spray paint in the middle of this station? You're going to get arrested. <laughs> I don't care. So. Make my job so difficult? Okay. <laughs> I will Im immediately go as stealthy as I can and lurk as far away from the group as I can with eyes on. All right. I don't want to be seen. Okay. Uh... How can I make you do that? Um, May I make a suggestion? Yeah, go for it. If you have a suggestion. Can it be communication performance? You know what? Go for it. And D, if you are like trying to like keep out of sight, make a stealth. Dexterity stealth. Um, okay. I'm also be a full perception mode while, while uh, they're All doing right. that, so... Any, with anybody like taking a look around uh, you can uh, give me a perception seeing or hearing if you're like trying to see or hear something what happens if you get a six on a drama die uh that depends do you have anything else somewhere else do you have any double anywhere else uh oh no no double okay uh, just uh, have a six a four and a three six four and a three for total off Oh, uh, with my perception, 64, 13. Uh, that'd be a 15 total. 15, okay. Uh, and I'm rocking a 14. 14. Uh, stealth is... 12. Stealth is uh, dex-based? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, so, Des got a 12 with double twos and a two on the uh, drama die. Okay. And then... For performance, uh, I did get doubles. I got a six on the drama die and another six, and then I got a two, so that's fourteen. And then communication performing, I have, I do have a focus in performing, that's so plus it's two. three in communication and two in performing, so it's total of fourteen plus five is nineteen. Okay. Any uh, for those that generated double, do you want to use your stun point in any shape or form? Um, um I rolled, I rolled a ten total. I rolled double twos and I rolled a five on my drama die, but I also have a talent where it, all other people suffer a minus two penalty to detect me. Okay. Cause I'm a fringer. So. Okay. All right. Um, I think in terms of just general, mine is more general social and it's, it's kind of, I'm just, uh, kind of um i mean there's with a flourish uh there's there is with a flourish so it's kind of like yeah i guess with a flourish all right so you do get a lot of attention that's for sure at whatever you're doing uh some people get around you uh some are confused you do spot some people from Taiko security, which are very, very not impressed by what you're doing. Uh, and they're eyeing you right now and just keeping an eye on your real- da -da, subtle middle fingers while I'm working. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you feel, you feel confident that you found a spot that is fairly out of sight for the most part? Uh, this did attract attention and trying to communicate essentially that you're looking for people, Lola, right? Yes, I'm, I'm trying to look for specifically the kind of people that D mentioned. Okay. Um, that the, the ones kind of like, and communicating that these are the people I'm looking for in a subtle way. I don't know how to express that fully in my words right now, but okay. I'm trying to be, you know, subtle. Um, subtle, but yes, yeah, getting a lot of attention at the same time. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, yeah, thankfully that performance wasn't 
decent enough roll that you can actually achieve something like that. Um, eventually, you do your performance. People are right, are a bit confused by it, but uh, Taiko Security is still keeping an eye on you. Like, like fuck, we'd have to we gotta have to clean that mess. Uh, but not trying, not trying to make any big move um, about it. It's nothing that is too too bad. Uh, I'm pretending I'm busking. Yeah. You, uh, everybody, pay attention. You do notice that there is uh, in the crowd uh, a y fairly young uh, belter woman uh, that kept looking at Lola, um, and as, as soon as Lola is done with her performance, she approach. Hoi, so you. I tried to understand what you are trying to do. Uh, I'm not sure. Are you looking for people or something? Or... Yeah, I'm trying to get in contact with some extraordinary individuals working on some extraordinary things. Okay. I mean, your message was a bit weird. I'm not sure it's just a weird inner thing. I'm just a bit weird, you know. Okay. Look at me. Yeah, I mean, I I've seen some strange things around the station and around Ember. No, it's not my first time around. I, you know, just, you know, uh, y'all so strange. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, if you're looking for people, I don't know. My my boyfriend re recently went missing as well, but along with another Belter woman. Okay. And no, I know All before right. everybody assumed, oh, you probably left with the, the other Belter woman and just left you behind. That's not the case, okay? Okay, okay. I, I, I wasn't gonna... I wasn't gonna assume. Good. But, you know... It's like... I've seen, like, many better just... Go off the radar completely on the station. Not necessarily yeah. just... I don't know what you were inter interpreting over there. Like... But... There's been a lot of people just going missing. Yeah, yeah. Do you? People go missing. And you she seen... probably like, get you like into like a more quiet place on the station, and, like the, the, the yeah, okay. Street. I'll I'll, 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 I'll make sure that my companions know where I am. But like, I mean, oh. how could they miss me after that? Mm. But like, I'll, I'll um, no. I'll, I'll allow myself to be led. Uh, yeah. Phoenix is definitely going to try to uh, always keep Lola in sight, yeah. but in, in a distance to where they don't appear suspicious, uh, because last thing they want is Lola to just disappear off the radar yeah. uh, after she gave off this performance. So. Do we see any of like the strange not security security personnel mm -hmm. like lurking at the fringes here? So because that's what yeah. Jess was kind of looking for. Uh, if D, you're trying to do that, just give me also a perception seeing test. Uh, but you, you know, um, six, twelve, fifteen, plus the other three for perception, so that's eighteen. And I rolled a six on my drama die. All right, it's pretty good. This die never rolls this good. Apparently, it really likes this game. Hey, it's 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 a, di it's a die expense. made for the expense, right? <laughs> there we go. Uh, I mean, it is. It's very spacey. So, as um, Lola is being uh, brought aside, talking to that uh, woman, she introduced herself as Nicola, um, and talking about like the m m missing Belta. Nobody care about us, Belta, especially not not you no know, the current security. Like it's a, it's a with Anna right now, you know, as if I, you know, I, you pretend. I get but, it. I get it. I was nobody yeah. on Earth, less than nobody. Yeah. Oh. It's been like it's been the past few days. That's a lot about to miss. I don't know where they went. Um, yeah. But if you're looking into that, maybe like I don't know if it's connected or not. There's some very weird, weird people around, and you do, uh, Phoenix, Des, and Riff, and Deed. I've been paying attention. Uh, I've seen some. Uh. uh Clips of the uh, we may be possibly just keep an eye an eye out for, 
uh, you do spot them around and they've been they've seen like you've been traveling around and one of them approach somebody roll me a d6 six okay some of uh, one of you approach you death actually because d is being very very quiet and sneaky and trying to be as invisible as possible so you've been asking a lot of questions you and your friend over there how about we keep quiet here eh? especially in there looking into better business right and it, it like like he has, he has a jacket and just like slightly shown it on his on his hip that this man does have a pistol Right. Felix is um, looking away. Goober, the drone, kind of goes to the side and opens up a kind of what you appear like a faceplate suddenly opens up just slightly to see the barrel of a pistol also, and then it closes and she just kind of tilts her head. So I think your drone around uh, would definitely attract a lot of attention and a lot of scary okay. eye, especially if, if you're the first one brandishing from it uh, a weapon ring. It's just like slightly open, yeah. just yeah. to kind of where he would see it, no one else would. Yeah. And he, he looks around, and you you do see other people. How about we ta we take a little uh, walk over there, you and your friend, right? That's cute. What mm -hmm. is it that you have to hide by chance? Did we struck a nerve? That's none of your business, Inna. How about we go over there? Huh? And then we can I talk mean, about that business. Well, as we're walking over there, Riff's gonna go, Well, I mean, you can make a job easier and just talk. We wouldn't be asking questions if somebody would just talk. Mm -hmm. And you do see like like or, or two around just eyeing you all. We can talk. Yeah, we can talk. Just a bit more private, right? Why don't you hail your friend over there and let we, let's have a talk. So Phoenix is already going to take a look and try to eye how many. And they don't look like Tycho security at all, by the way. They look mm -hmm. sketchy as fuck. How, how many is it total of the group? Uh, you can see three total around you. Okay. And I Phoenix. can see all three of them from where I'm at. Oh, yeah. I'm going to, once they start moving, I'm going to follow like way back far enough that I can still see them, but they don't realize they're being tailed. Okay. Make them quick, do a quick perception test just to see. Like I might be like head down in a data pad or something. Like I'm reading and walking, like mm -hmm. just ever so casually looking up, because I can track everybody on their communicators. So I'm just like, mm -hmm. yeah. Look, the people I work for, are, they don't like when you know people ask a lot of questions around business, right? So it'd be in the best of interest of your entire crew to just go away and not ask questions anymore or you know the accident can happen on the station somebody may just i don't know take a, a walk into an airlock without an vaccine that would be very unfortunate or just up oh, i'm pretty sure that the taiko station can always use more uh, fertilizer oh straight to threats that's cute Hmm. These individuals are funny. Oh, I've like, had so many worse threats. Like this is poultry. Wait, so we're in the talking phase. Let me. We're being paid to be here, and the least you could do is at least make up a cover story instead of just threatening us to go away. That, there, where's the fun in that? Uh, why, why you know use cover story when you can just tell you to go away in a. Well, then they're going to hire somebody else. Come on, think. Yeah. Then, no. <laughs> uh, where's next? Uh, asking a, a question. Well, I think it's going to be the same situation. I don't mind, you know, spacing a few inners. 
if that's the way you want to go. God, you're dense and boring. Come on. <laughs> um, I think a Phoenix is going to do like a hand gesture just real quick to Des. It's kind of like their their hand gesture of like, should I take them? Um, like they're not they're not the brains at all here. They're just like muscle, mm -hmm. all right. And Dead just uh, kind of does her usual stretch, giving the code of, wait one second for Lola, and then go, hmm. kind of. He nods, and he's how, just eye. How just close eye. up behind the one in the back can I get with no one else seeing me? Uh, given her stealth roll, I'm going to just get her perception test. Oh, sh man. Uh, 13. 13, any stun? And on? I rolled double ones. Double ones. I keep rolling doubles, y'all. It's what's, wild. Uh, what's on your drama die? That's awesome. A one. A one. Okay. All right. Yeah, you're fairly confident you're able to get, like, within, like, I don't know, five, ten meters behind them. Oh, I wanted to get, like, right up behind them. Okay, like, if you want to get closer, you can easily get there. Yeah, I want to get right up close to the one in the back, because there's, like, no one else around, right? They've tucked us somewhere pretty private. Yeah, as private as it can be on, like, there's some back alley, like, access. I'm going to pull out one of the daggers and hold it against the dude's back and be like, y'all might want to shush. <laughs> and, like, it, 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 it lifts his hand and looks behind uh, very, very low because he's much, much taller than you are, right? Mm -hmm. But I've literally got it, like, between two vertebrae in his yeah. back. Like, if he moves funny, he ain't walking again. As I said, cute. <laughs> This isn't funny. And, you know, when professionals get hired, we're professional. So maybe you want to rethink the threats. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Creative. Come on. Am I still in the alley with the other woman? I mean, you've probably. Are you still there? You tell me, Lola. Well, I kind of like you yeah. know. I, I did my job. I comforted her. Yeah. I'm like, all right, look, we're investigating this. We're we're gonna find everything we can, and like, we'll, we're doing the best we can. Thank you for telling me this, because now it means that not just inners are going missing, it also means belters and mm -hmm. like everything. So like, mm -hmm. that broadens the scope of what these yeah. people are after. So and it seems to be a wide scale uh, skill set of people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not just very, very clever scientific people. Wait, I have my thing. I have. I actually have one. Look at you. <laughs> it's Prop small works. enough to do serious damage, but it's easy to hide. Yep. Just right up between two vertebrae. Just. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You know. Anyone reaches for a pistol, and this man never walks again. And they look at each other. All right. Go on your business. Just be recommended not to have too much asshole if it'd be good, right? Right? I'm sure we can. Do you know about the missing scientists? You seem to have taken notice enough to come over here and talk to us. Give me a, a communication and intimidation test. And I, I'm going to get grant you a plus two to that, just because you're holding a blade behind him. Okay, plus two to intimidate. I don't have an intimidation, but I do have a whole bunch of communication, so. Please. Because it's what I do. Okay, that was a shitty fucking roll, though. Um, <laughs> I rolled a one, a two, and a three, so that's Ooh. six. Plus three is nine, plus Ooh. two is 11. I'm just going to make them do a will test. Okay. We may know a few things about people. I know how these things work, so they're going to take out some Martian dollars. Like, this going to make you talk? In our script? I'm sure you can trade it. Uh, I mean... Of course. I mean, I got Belter right here. That's really mm. what you want. That's a bit more of value any tradability around here um i mean we have seen them just we've been 
Some of them may have been escorted out of the station. To where? I mean, we've taken them on a couple ship. Uh, right now, there's... Uh, uh, what, what's the name of the ship that we're going... Uh, uh, the, the ship. I think, is it, is it a, a Besnir or something like that? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's... Try, uh, just a little freighter here. Yeah. Come on, be oh, specific. Name, Doc. No, well, we got we got the name. We can look up the rest of it. Yeah. All right. Never mind. What was the name again? The Abyssinia. Abyssinia. I'm gonna Abyssinia? I'm gonna I'm gonna type it in our chat. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, Abyssinia. Oh. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Don't know where they're going. We're not paid for that. We just say. Our, our job is to just make sure that people are, you know, not asking too much around. And sometime, if needed, just encourage people to take an extended vacation. And who hired you? Yeah. I still absolutely no. have my knife at this dude's back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, just cut it all. Firm called a vector security. Mm, vague, oh. very vague. Uh, if Des you kind of spies yeah. and pulls out a bigger bill of belter. Oh yeah, you, you're like wealthy. I remember. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's like um, probably a hundred, and she's one that makes sure that she has different mm -hmm. notes given yeah. her wealth. She's like. I mean, Would this make you talk a little bit better? For Belter money, it looks like more like poker chips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like the golden or the platinum chip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anybody that w w wants to just have a general idea of who Vector Security are, uh, you can give me an intelligence. Uh, I'd say business or just sec actually even security. If you have that focus, intelligent security. I'm not even gonna roll because there's literally no way unless I would have right. heard. Well, I mean, I can roll and see if maybe I heard something earlier. Mm -hmm. I was like, can I use history? <laughs> oh, sure. Now I roll good. Uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I rolled a 13, a two on the drama die. Okay. Um, no doubles. So okay. I got a um, double on the drama, one on two sixes. And a four, that's 16. Oh. One of the six is on a drama die, and then I have a plus one for intelligence. So that's 17? 17, and what's on your drama die? Uh, six. six. Uh, same it is for. Oh, Des got six. the same rolls. Oh, really? <laughs> a four, a six, and a six. six. Drama die is a six, six. but her okay. is a 18 because she has a plus two from intelligence. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, it works so the perfectly. Marshes are just like beep. <laughs> Riff, oh, you have a what a nine, nine, a two, and a three hundred drama die. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a two, a three, and a five on the drama die, which is ten, and then I have a three in intelligence, so thirteen. Okay. And what was your roll again, D? A uh, thirteen total, a two on the drama die. Okay, perfect. All right, so, uh, death and phoenix for sure you will have heard of them uh they are a uh, private firm uh, that makes perfect sense no they don't they're, they don't they're not necessarily associated with any uh station per se or any planet uh some people will hire them uh, they have for their the service that they provide, they tend to do an average job, uh, depending on who you hire <laughs> and uh, who they have on, on staff. Right now, you, uh, you have the trio of meatheads, which are just there to be muscle, but not very clever. Hey, they're all belters, right? Uh, currently, there's two belter and one. Uh, it's hard to tell. She's much smaller than the other one. Um, and there's no visible marking, but 
Beltry do often take some of their job because it beats a lot of the job that they can have around. Um, they have private security. Um, Sometimes they are into a bit more sketchier business type of thing, uh, including this at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, that's not overly surprising. That also brings us at a turn 10. Uh-oh. Uh, so... Hey, oh, so do we get to, what do we happen with the double dice? I forgot for drama dice. You, uh, you, you, you do have a stun point that you can generate. Whatever is the number oh, okay. on that drama die, you can choose to enhance whatever test you were trying to do. So six uh, stun points? Yeah. Yeah. I have so many. Yeah. Wait, do I have to use it now? They, 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 don't, they, don't, they don't accumulate, right? They just... Oh, yeah. Yeah. They can okay. stay for that yeah. um, roll. At least, not no, always. But... Yeah, that's true. Uh, but I would, I would also but probably like be something like, you know, a breakthrough. Like, you just, like, it just clicked on you, right? In, in your investigation. Uh, that, yeah, okay, yeah, you've all, you've heard of them. They're uh, a, a private firm that... Most people that want to remain in mostly legal business won't do business with them. Uh, and where oh. the, the origin is from, uh, they have a sh complicated history. It, some say that you no, know, they're currently they're Earth mafia o. enforcers. Yeah, <laughs> they're essentially you know, mafia enforcers that you can hire. Uh, somebody roll me a d6, please. I will. Four. Oh, nope. Oh, oh, sorry. Nope. Go ahead. You got it. Four. 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 All right. Uh, turntable. All right. Well, you're lucky. No effect on that. Yay! Yes. Can I use my five points of the six for breakthrough? Yeah. That's what I was planning to do as well, and then have a flashback. Yep. Ah. <laughs> the Martians are on the perfect wavelength. Yep. We've been together for five years on this ship. So we know each we other well. The Earthers are yeah. ready to go beat someone's ass. Yeah. And I've still so, got my knife to somebody's back because I'm yeah. protecting us all at this point. So, uh, as a breakthrough, yeah, it's, you get all the information, all, all shit I should be here. Flashback, you've probably encountered them in the past or heard of them in the past somewhere. Uh, they have been running some security details around Eros and Ganymede and here and there for a less than sa savory people. So uh, those are either like the new hire or people that are just not paid enough to care or not clever enough to talk their way into doing the right things. But you, they typically have like some communication ID and things like that on them, right? All right, so we get proof, right? You get uh, incontroversial proof. Mm -hmm. uh, And welcome back. So, where we left right before the break, the crew of the Tamet uh, had some running with the less than efficient uh, security personnel of Victor Security. We were seeing a few clues uh, that would lead them towards. Uh, a spe uh, specific ship, the uh, Esvenir Hazard, or Esvenir. And welcome back. Oh. 
So, oh, where we left right before the bride. There we go. <laughs> I add the uh, to the five page, add the uh, extra life page open, and I add the stream on and confuse the crap out of me. <laughs> you hear your voice at the same time, <laughs> just like like with a delay after, right? Because of the stream, yeah. so it mm -hmm. confuses mm -hmm. the hell out of me. Oh God. All right. I hate when that happens. Double. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did that live on stream the other day with my music, and it was like an Eldritch Horror piping through my system, and I'm like, oh god, what have I done? <laughs> oh, panda has ascended. Panda yeah. has become <laughs> the Eldritch Panda. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Somebody make art of Eldritch Panda, that would be great. Oh, that would be uh, fighting the Chew. Fighting the Chew. Uh, so. Yeah, you have some clothes of where at least have been transported to or going to here and there uh, on on a ship called the uh, Esbenir uh, um, which is currently docked at Tycho Station Dock 4 uh, however you wish to approach the ship that is entirely up to you can we see the entrance to Dock 5 from here it's yeah it's it's actually like a big like dock, right? There's like a couple number here and there, but yeah, you can. I just want to make sure that like there's packages and stuff that are looking like they're being delivered. Oh yeah, there there are people that <laughs> have been already taking care of that, um, making sure that it's built in your accessible access cargo bay. All right. Uh, no problem at all. So, what's the play here? Like we could go up and be conversational and be like, "Hey, hi, how you doing?" What you, mm -hmm. what you, what you got there on board, buddy? Uh, we could go, uh, what I call Phoenix Rising plan, where you know we send Phoenix at the front, like the tip of the sphere, to kick some ass uh, and just go in. Uh, we could go the full-on stealth route, at which point we, you know, throw D in from one side as we make a distraction from the other. Um, you know, options. I think that I think Phoenix should just go knock on the d door, basically, because security and go check on things, and then you know. I do have the ID badge, so there were three I mean, of them, right? That's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Give us ID badges. Mm -hmm. So I could also keep them from leaving. Lock their landing gear down. Hmm. That, that is your funny. specialty riff. So I say that works. three of us have ID badges. That means three of us could go in from the front and we could be able to perform the task that you just mentioned. And we should be good. Especially since this private security is a um a area that collects all different types, belters, Martians, and Earthers. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have to worry about that issue. Mm -hmm. And what then if? I can also hack into their computers and cause a little chaos as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what if, like, you know, from the inside out kind of situation, uh, Riff can do things to their landing gear and stuff on the inside to lock them down. Dez can do things on the inside mm -hmm. to the computers. And if things go to shit, Phoenix can be there to, like, fuck them up kind of a thing. So, like, we give you three the ID badges to go in. And then, like, I sit on the outside and start painting their ship to get a distraction. Um, and D sneaks in the back. So, so yeah. just to, like, your idea of sitting outside and painting a ship is brilliant. I love it. The only thing is that it's not like, oh, it's right physically there. It is attached, mm -hmm. right? With it, like, mm -hmm. a tube. So it's you would need essentially to go where there's no gravity at all and hop, which would oh, yeah. probably up, go up there. You basically have to go get on our ship and go out the airlock. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh God! It's fine. I mean, where you are currently, there is you know. Yeah, you would need to go outside the airlock. Well, maybe instead of painting their ship, maybe, maybe we just like. I don't know. Let the three most official people go in looking like they're supposed to be there and they're forcing us onto the ship because that seems to be what's happening. Yeah, I was going to suggest that either that have you to be uh, two possible um, capturees to help mm -hmm. aid with the cause. Um, or we also could look into see if there's any 
uh, additional entryways into the ship via um, via some uh, schematics and to perhaps allow you easy access to that route. I'm but, always oh. a fan of the most direct route because, mm-hmm. you know, you just got to get me inside and I can... Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. 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 Lock me up. If you need handcuffs, there's some in my quarters. Phoenix just smirks. He's like, no, I definitely have someone stand by. Um, I, I just think we uh, need handcuffs, though. Like, just lead us in uh, like we're being let in like we don't have a choice. Mm-hmm. The flashier we get with this, the more it's going to draw attention, and I think that's going to be a bad thing. Fair. I like the handcuffs, though. Well, yes, we but know you do for other things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I'll be in the back since I will be the one, the muscle that's making sure that the capturees do not escape, uh, who will like to approach the front and be the mouthpiece of sorts. Not me. Yeah. Oh, uh, fuck. Yes? My coffee is running out, so not me. Yeah. All right, well, I, Great. <laughs> I <laughs> guess I'm talking then. Wait, wait so, but okay, they're the capturees. So, well, Lola and I will switch spots. Okay. I'm just a grease monkey. It's fine. Qu- right. Question on a scale of 1 to 10. How much noise do you think you've been making around the station? Like looking for people in general? An 8, probably. Well, I mean, I have not made an 8. I'm at like a Lola. negative 4. Lola, yeah. Lola has made about an 8. Everyone <laughs> else is in the, the probably the low twos at mm-hmm. best I I, literally yeah. all i did was talk to the to the life so mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh maybe capture lola lola has to be captured <laughs> we have no choice there mm-hmm. um yeah. mm-hmm. that's what i was yeah. thinking all right well, well i that... mean phoenix I you can be... just talk you don't mm-hmm. have to stand at the back looking like a security stand at the front be the security and the other two can mm-hmm. look like the ones bringing up the back to make sure we don't run that's what I was thinking. Seems like the best plan of action. All right. Is anyone ready? Any, anyone need to gather or collect a few things before we go inside? I am taking a quick bathroom break. I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> should we go so you're, and you're, shit off of our ship? You are literally approaching the ship with a prisoner. Two. Okay. Most likely, uh, Des would be one of the prisoners because. They probably would recognize that she's related to Calypso, who's also on the sh- uh, well, station. So it's like, hmm. that's the thing that I've been thinking is like, uh, possible oh. ransoms. Whatever. Well, well, that's fair. You also seem very anti everything to do with your family. Mm-hmm. That's true. So if you got hired to help out, like, whatever. And probably for Des, her mother would be very pissed off. And this is just another See? one of those things. It's like, yeah, okay. Des will take point then. The the, the loud one and, and the threatening one have been Are captured. They, in terms of most, yeah. most convincing captured individuals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. A lot. All right. Okay. That's that's an interesting approach. I like it. <laughs> and another thing, your mother would be very disappointed if she knew what was you do doing right here right now. And another thing. <laughs> Can we have like on our way there, stop by our ship, made sure everything was cool, grab weapons and shit? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. okay. <laughs> So yeah. I have a pistol tucked in my, like, in the small of my back now, like, in my pants. Mm-hmm. Hmm. If, I would well, think that uh, Des would probably have picked up some of her tech tools to be able to do um, computer stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Brass uh, knuckles. Yeah, I'm armed to the teeth. Uh, pistol, rifle, uh, swords. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much I... all the gadgets necessary. Which would be very visible. And a pistol. Mm-hmm. Uh, bring this amount of weaponry onto the docks as part of your equipment. 
you as a security person would know that it would get a lot of attention from Taiko Station and you will be pulled aside. Just to clarify, the individuals that we saw who were part of the private firm, what were they packing with? We saw a pistol there, so we know a pistol is yeah, fine. Yeah, from what you could see, it was just pretty much like low-key pistol? pistol, right? Oh, okay. So they were... They were um, no, they were not low-key. Low yeah, they were low-key. Oh, okay. Key. They were low-key? Okay. In that case, yeah, it would pretty much be the same pistol. Brass yeah, we're not army of wanting this. Mm, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I kind of assumed that they were... Just set up brass knuckles in the pockets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I'm pretty much the same. I'm pretty much packing the same way that those yeah. security guards were. Like, going around in D&D with like a bunch of weapon on you is, is cool. Going yeah. around in the expanse with like, you look like you're like a goddamn tank. <laughs> yeah. It's questionable. It's questionable. Like, hmm, what are you planning on doing here, sir? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got a Thank dagger you. in each boot with baggy ass pants over it, and I've got like my pistol tucked away where no one can see it, and that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I would have left my pack back on the ship, too. So, now that you're geared up appropriately, from the, the, you know, we all know how the docking station work, you essentially put your airlock in a little, little tube that connects to the dock so that oxygen stays inside the station and not out, it goes outside in the vacuum. <laughs> Um, and in case of emergency, they can just lock it down even more. Uh, but it's all glass until like they do like emergency lockdown. Uh, you're able to see your ship there, and you're able to see as been your ship with a tube there and some station uh, dock and just working around it. Uh, you don't necessarily see anybody that would be. Associated, associated with, it, with like a ship uniform per se around around it at the moment but right now it's all belter dock and working around just make essentially making some add, adding like bringing like food things like that whatever they, they may need on board the ship itself is not a gunship it is very much a freighter ship like passenger ship that would just bring people and cargo In the entryway, uh, is the entryway just like uh, electronic, where you just swipe your ID badge, or is there? Yeah, how does how is that looking? Uh, so the entryway right now is essentially just like like an open tunnel, which would lead into the ship. Whatever is on the other side, like later on the tunnel, it might just be something like with the actual ship ID and things like that to lo get in. And access okay. some of the dock, and would probably have some ac temporary access to get in and out as needed. But it's the same thing as your as your ship, right? If you want to go in, you can usually punch in a code and get in, uh, which is sometimes safer than just having a little thing that you can swipe. Swipe and punch. Mm -hmm. Swipe and punch. So access to this area, does it look like it's a code or do we can we swipe our badge to be able to access, get inside? To get access to like the entrance of the that docking area, you can just walk there easily. Just may okay. look a bit weird because you're not docking and going to a ship that they've never seen you go to before. Hmm. But do anything with confidence and they don't look at you twice. It's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bring people with an in, in cough may look weird though. Yeah, we're not doing cuffs. <laughs> no, cuffs. no, we're just no walking. Mm -hmm. D's gonna just take a very indignant, like, fuck these cops kind of attitude stance. Like, she mm -hmm. does not want to be there. She's gonna play mm -hmm. it up really hard that she's like, I don't want to be here and don't have a choice. Okay. Like, I'm gonna lean as hard into the make it look like I am being forced here against my will, like they would have seen people do at some point. If they're really... <laughs> Putting people on the ship. All right. Well, I mean, there's a lot of not necessarily just bystander, right? So if you're, are you really looking? Okay. Just, just rolling for the general bystander because you're looking like you're. <laughs> yeah, so you see this dock and approach you and like just like look at you and look at, at your crew, and just like. Like they seem to be sending something over comms. Mm. Hmm. 
Do we but notice just, that? Just, just, uh, give me, uh, give, give, all of you, give me your perception seeing, just to see uh, which would have been noticing it. But as just like a regular dog and person, not necessarily somebody that is associated with a ship. But you have a uh, little D. That's okay. That's a weird way to say it. Um, <laughs> uh, acting to the best of her acting ability, like she's been taken more or less against her will without making a fuss. So, this is weird. I had three, four. So, uh, in my perception is plus two, so that would be a 14. Okay. Uh, for stunts, that's another exploration, right? If we're talking about looking Yeah, around. you can, you can, whatever you feel like would be appropriate, exploration would work well. I rolled a 12. Um, but yeah. I just realized I never picked a profession, a, a focus, so I don't know what the bonus to that would be. Uh, focus is, I think, or plus two. Mm -hmm. So then it would be 14. 14? Any yeah. stun point generated with that? Uh, no. But then I rolled a one on the drama die. Oh, okay. Death and Lola. Uh, what did you roll, Death? Uh... If, if you rolled at all. And I'm not trying to be... Would be... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I would say Des would be focused more in front of us. Okay. But right. I rolled, let's see, that would be perception. That's two fives. Five on the uh, drama dice. So that would be 14 for a perception check. And what's on your drama die? It was a five. Okay. So I would just have, let's see, I would use intuition and uh, lucky break to see if I see anything okay. interesting in front of me. Uh, 13 on perception. No, okay. no, no, no doubles or anything. Five oh. on the drama die. Okay. Um, so you do know, like, some that roll above, like, 13. I, I do notice that deck hand just nonchalantly they just like spotting D and you're correcting weird <laughs> can I choose on the fence to make them uh, on my side of the conflict so I kind of like see them noticing and give them like a maybe like a smirk and maybe, yeah I'm not sure maybe finger guns and stuff like that to make it seem like oh, yeah okay, these individuals are good hey, hey finger guns are universal right you know even in the mm -hmm. belt it's part of the you know, broad language that they use there um, they do use a lot of body language and let's say the finger guns are part of that <laughs> um, they'll still like kid and just like send communication like yeah you know all good okay, okay. Um, but they seem just that person just seems to be working there mm -hmm. um, you do see somebody with uh, a uniform or well, by uniform it's this and she's just like overall with the name of the ship uh, that see, seems to be going uh, in there and in, in the ship itself but um, so you're all acting casual with some prisoner <laughs> I'm more looking like the teenage kid that got caught doing something they yeah. weren't supposed to and everyone's now pissed at them and they know they're busted mm -hmm. and I Thing. Your uh, shut it. <laughs> and it, but yeah, not full blown prisoners, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, nobody around here have seen you before, so they have no bloody clue who you are, right? Um. But if you want to try to get on board, uh, it could be something that is easily done if you actually you know, by talking to somebody and see, like, you know. Or it seems to just be a charter ship. Somebody get a charter ship, so yeah. So we were we were going to go up to uh, I guess the person who yeah allows us access is to say uh, we have some clientele we would like to to bring on board. So are you going to the dock hand or more the just like person that appeared to be working on and that be part of the crew? Uh, it'll be a part. The one dog on Tycho. 
<laughs> the one dog went psycho. It would be uh, one of the members of the crew that's presented there. All right. <laughs> so you're presented with uh, this tall uh, woman that appeared to be of what would seem like East Asian origin if we w were on Earth. And she look at you. Yeah, uh, what can I do? So you're looking to book passage on is that it yes mm -hmm. all right um, correct. if you got the script uh we do have and she looked at all of you so uh, for all of you yes yes all right um uh, yeah yeah we can we can book people on board no, no problem. Um, just uh, give me a negotiation bargaining just for your pro like to see like, what it would cost you. And are I mean since you're trying to are you trying to deceive the person or just persuade her? We want to get on board. So that's yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. Your intentions are semi honest. So I will allow you to either do a um, deception or persuasion, depending on whichever would be best to. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. All right. Wow. Uh. So I have to give you a lot of doubles. A two five and a three. Two five and a three. One. Uh. I mean. So it's fourteen. Yeah, I mean we can book you. That depends of where you where you're going. We are currently on course for. Uh, what was the place that I have in my note? That's not that one. Which well, yeah yeah we're on on course for like for like series, but if you want to go to a different station, uh, you you may be able to book passage over there. Uh, series so is perfectly fine for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean we do, you know, sometimes you know, bring people to uh, different locations. So, mm -hmm. thanks right. for that heads up. If, if we decide to change our plans to a different location, we'll, we'll mm -hmm. keep you in mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it would not be, you know, that unusual, right? Uh, have been like all right but yeah you you do pay some credit get on board get get a little quarter assigned for the most part it just seems to be just standard cargo and transportation of people um, you don't at first hand see anybody that would look like they're not there against their will maybe d because for some reason uh, which would on par acting um but yeah, you are currently uh, on board the, the vessel. Yeah, uh, while we're on board, uh, Des is going to send a quick message to Calypso going, please, for the love of everything, watch my ship and don't let, don't do anything to it. I like this ship. Mm -hmm. All nice. right. Once there's no employees and stuff around, I'm going to lean over to Des and be like, Des, like, this was not, they're hiding people on this ship, I think. I don't think this is one of their ships. I think maybe you can go talk to the captain. Like, captain to captain, daughter of an admiral, like, maybe go throw a little bit of weight around to be like, hey, maybe don't go nowhere for a minute, because, like... You might have some people that have been kidnapped on your ship and when you're trying to investigate. Like, maybe throw your mom's name around. I don't know. You just see actual pain. Uh, hey, look, if you gotta you know put what? up with her, at least use it. Well, yes. also, like, if you really want to annoy her, throw her name around. That's true. She does hate the Vector security. Yeah. This is not a this is not a Martian vessel by any means, right? So mm. the weight. Yes, it yeah. definitely would carry anywhere near as much weight as if we were on a Martian vessel. But 
Yeah, that's what I but was But still, thinking. captain to captain, like... I mean, sometimes captains take a little bit of money yeah, in certain well. situations. Yeah, well, I ain't gonna be able to help you with that, but if somebody yeah. can get me near the cargo bay, I can go investigate some shit. I was actually planning to try to hack into their system to see if I could see other things. I was going to ask about that. Mm -hmm. what are the, where the possible computer terminals may be at around here. Yeah. I mean, there's like in Quirus, I see, because you're a larger group, you have a semi private room. It's divided in like a little station. And you're, you may have like this one other like belter there just like dozing off, uh, not paying attention to any of you. So. <laughs> The IDs but, we got, were they for this ship or for Vector? They were for Vector. They were not for the ship. Okay. Right. Okay. The Vector IDs. So we... So do we need to go to Vector? Like, we need to... The vector is a firm, it's not a location. Well, it's a location, okay. yes or no, but... Okay. So Great. essentially, if cool. anyone asks us any questions, we could say we work for Vector and present mm. these IDs. Yeah. Yes. Neat. Excellent. Wonderful. Um, but yeah, you can try to act in the calm. You can go and interact with member of the crew. Uh, whatever approach you wish to have here, go for it. Uh, Des is definitely going to see if she can find a system that she can use Goober to uh, connect to. Okay. And basically go through... Uh, yeah using goober's tech to kind of hack in a little bit a little easier yeah i mean all all the ship app you have basic like calm at all location you have basic like calm access like for somebody, some, somebody needs to come and get something to the ship you can hear and see it and you have little screens uh, your access as passenger is typically very restricted as mm. one would uh, is there a vent system there is a vent system. It's not a very large vent system. And there's technically also layers between you no, know, the inner part and the exterior part in case of debris. But uh, currently like the only like vent system it, that you have in your room is like a little thing that. Damn it. I was like. D is small, I, but I not that like, small. We, I was yeah, I'm say, small and I'm used to vent? living in vents, but I'm not used to, I can't get in a vent that small. Maybe if we squish. No, mm -hmm. not gonna work. Um, all right, D. No, D we... isn't a cat. What if we go on a walk? Yeah, I like that idea. Let's just go on a walk. You know, stretching our legs around the ship. Yeah, while they're working on like hacking stuff, I think that's gonna be that'll be the play. We're gonna go wander around the ship, like through the areas we're allowed to, and start looking for entrances to cargo bays. I'm yeah. going to be listening to people's conversations, okay. like starting to see if we can get a hint that maybe some of these people are on the ship or where they might be. Okay. All right. Uh, give me perception seeing, actually perception hearing if you're trying to listen to. Okay. Twelve. Twelve. Two. I, and I did roll doubles. I rolled double okay. threes. Okay. So you can use and a three on my drama die. Um, if you want 15, up that to die. possibly hear more, you can use some of your fortune point if you want. Yeah, I'll use I'll use some of that. I want to really be listening to see if we can get a clue as to where okay. we need to go. So which die are you upping and to what? Um. Oh God, I don't even know how to do that. So sorry, this what are you, what, is very very yeah. crunchy for my and poor little brain. It's all right. What what are you currently your three die? Uh, a three, a three, and a one. Okay. What is your drama uh, drama die? Is it drama die is a three. Okay. So if you want, for example, to up, up that one to a three, you will spend three uh, fortune point. Yeah, let's do that. And so, then it's going to be triples. It's it'll be triple three. So it'll be nine, twelve, fifteen. Okay. All right. 
14. 14. Sorry. That's good. I'm queer. I can't do math. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> you can either be queer or do math. You cannot be both. All right? Uh, uh, Jamie did it, uh, defies all logic. Just You can do yeah. math, sit in a chair like a normal human being, or drive. Pick one. <laughs> I got driving. Uh, I can do all of those except sit in a chair like a normal human being. Well, there you go. See? That... that... Your uh, power astounds on me. The math. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, Jamie defies all logic. Yeah. And what I'm was a driving it? gay. I'm not a math gay, and I sit like a fucking goblin. Yeah. Uh, so, Lola, what was your roll? Uh, fifteen. Five <laughs> on the drama die. No doubles. All right. So you're. You do hear about just looking around like a member of like the Tycho station working and filling like air tanks and things like that you do see some crew member and a few few passenger uh, you do uh, spot somebody that appeared to be possibly from vector security on board and uh, you, you do hear like Two pilot like talking about like how oh, shit got weird since you know the vector guy has been doing business with them, or uh, and like they were talking about like a few weeks ago like that person that just you know spent their entire time in their room, which was very very weird. Um, but yes, essentially those appear to be possibly like the pilots on board. There. Can we get down to like the cargo hold, mm -hmm. like like to that area? Yeah. Like just just meandering down, out of not not garnering attention. Yeah. And kind of like get up to the cargo hold and be like, hmm, does it open? Like, can we just open it or is it locked down? Uh, so. The way like ships are built in there is like essentially a building, right? Like, so you would essentially be going to a lower floor to the cargo. Uh, the access is open. You're able to get in there uh, because there's people. There's been people going up and down since, right? Um, would it raise a bit of an eyebrow? Possibly. Uh, some some are just not paid enough to give a fuck. So. Just like try to avoid them as you're going pretty, down. Yeah, and I'm pretty sneaky just in general, so. Yeah, but yeah, you're able to make your way down to cargo. Anything look out of place? It's various crate people just loading in like supplies, like food, water, like refilling the water tank. Uh, is there any? Is there any cargo or shipping containers that are down there that look? too big or too small like stuff that looks like it would be out of place like because it's got to have vents because there's live animals inside of it or something <laughs> along those lines uh, riff, uh roll me an investigation uh, uh intelligence investigation test Actually, or yeah investigation uh, is what uh, uh, well yeah, perception searching yeah do perception okay. searching. Marco. Uh, 12, 15, 18, and I rolled two sixes. One of them on the drama die. Okay. I like that. Just made the turn go up a bit. I like that. <laughs> uh, for, the, for the most part, like you look at the, at the crates here, uh, some... And most of them have like some label on, on the side. One of them is like live soil. It's essentially carrying dirt. Uh, some of them is just, you know, uh, goods meant for um, like various like shipping goods. Some is like Gany uh, Ganymede gin. Uh, it's as for shape and size, some crates are, t are higher than you are, but you're not a very tall person. Some are shorter. Uh, None of them appear big enough to be a livable 
you may, it's not like you know giant container right this is a freighter ship but not that big it's not you've seen like so i don't i don't get the vibe that the people that are missing yeah. could possibly be down here yeah if yeah if somebody would have been put in those there yeah it would not necessarily be the best spot to hide somebody alive for a few weeks is this ship um here's the thought mm -hmm. is it possible B, that they might be like locked in their rooms like they're because like that's what i'm thinking mm -hmm. like my first instinct is they put them in a big container like you know they move people around on earth sometimes mm -hmm. when they want to make people disappear or people want to get places where they can't get easily like that was my first instinct but i think you might be right they're locked in rooms somewhere yeah, because go find you, whichever this pilot is who's locked up yeah because like if you get stopped for like inspection it's a lot less suspicious for people in a freight to be in a room than it is to be in a cargo container is the thing. Uh, yeah but people can get out of their rooms rooms yeah. have to be inspected too like I'm also starting to think that, like, so here, here's my other thought process is mm -hmm. we got the vector IDs and there's probably a vector firm somewhere on Tycho, right? Like a like specific like local office? Yeah, kind of a thing. Uh, roll me just a quick intelligence test just to know if you wouldn't. Have you you've probably have you become sure. come to Tycho before? Uh, I haven't, oh but man. I was I was down yeah. in like the general area for Just a hot minute looking around. So g give me a retroactive perception searching or seeing. Okay. So wait, yeah, do you I want rolled doubles again. Like... So 10, 12, 15. I rolled okay. two fives, one of them on the draw of my die. Okay. Do you want intelligence or perception from me? Uh, it depends if you're trying to recall something if from a previous visit or just uh, general knowledge. I'll say probably just after we got the ids kind yeah of looking around kind of a thing yeah can... so that's um so i got double sixes on okay. the drama die um so that's 13 plus perception is because i also got a one plus perception is four so 17. okay so as being a pri private firm that is not local to Tyco. Uh, they, they don't necessarily have like an uh, an office here. They don't have an office, an, at least an official sure. office space. Uh, they may be like renting room here and there under other assumption, but you haven't been able to spot something here. Ty I don't think that Tyco Station would ex allow a lot of additional firm to do fully business here. Like you can be just going by and going to a different place, but. As for just having a, an official office here, yeah. Uh, since Vector is security is not belt operated or OP operated, they would have issue with what that. What if they're op operating out of the ship? What if their offices are here on the ship? Like they don't have an office office, but they've we've already seen a few of their people here. What if they've got something going on here? Maybe we can, if we can get through the computer system and we've got ID numbers. Yeah. I mean, that's on Des at that point. Um, maybe we go back and tell Des what we found. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. Oh, maybe she can figure out which room it is that hasn't been opened in a while because somebody's locked in there. That would also. Yeah. Mm hmm. I don't know. Let's, yeah, let's do that. Hey, Des. At that point, I'm on comms, yeah. like, yeah. typing everything in. Yeah. Look for a room that has not been unlocked so, for weeks. All right, so while they were doing that, the rest of you, what were you doing? Uh, trying to hack into the system. All right, give me an uh, techn intelligence technology test. Yep. Or security with... Uh, Oh, that's 
so that's two fives, a three on the drama dice. So that would be 13 plus four, 17. 17. Okay. Uh, this ship is not built the same with your Martian gun, uh, gunship. It's not. And uh, there's a layer of security just to prevent certain things. But for the. Yeah, you're able to get access to, like, recent log, you know, travel, go in and, in and out. Uh, so from, from what you gather, just from accessing those log, uh, you see that they've been doing a lot of Tycho Vesta run, which is another station, and, okay, and like a lot of Ty uh, Tycho uh, series station run or in between. There's the occasional detour towards Herculina station. Which are typically, like, that's just because you got a pretty good roll. There's been an attempt at, at, at scrubbing that from the log. Just essentially not really fully logging. Like, it's, it, that, we took a detour. We're removing it from the log now. Going back on course type of deal. And, like, little moments where transponder work being turned off at the same time. Mm -hmm. What did you find? Uh, looks like they stopped off at a station and then tried to hide it out of the... Well, wipe it out of the logs. Mm. A lot of people forget how to properly get rid of their logs. You know, you delete thing and you forget about it, but it's still in the system. Kind of thing. A lot of people miss that. Well, um, would this be about... our gain. Oh, definitely. Uh, would this be about the time that Des gets the information? Yeah, it would be about um, the same time. Yeah, so you may do as you see fit with that information. Uh, she's then going to go through the logs that she can pull up to see which doors... Um, Possibly opened, or which yeah. ones seem to be oddly locked. Yeah. So currently, there's no uh, lock door on at least. There, I mean, there's some like lock door, like I, I like captain, like ca some certain quarter, like you know, control room, things like that. That general population would not have access to. But. Uh, no personal quarter like for like passenger that seems to be uh, locked. And you do see like you see, you also see like your recent like logging in like people okay we got like X, uh, five passenger just recently coming on board like five minutes ago. But yeah, there's definitely some occasional shenanigans with the coming and going that is outside of the usual business of this ship. Okay. Uh, since I had a three on the um, drama die, mm -hmm. and I had two uh, fives, can I use lucky break? Yeah. As in, as I'm going through, I notice something. Okay. What exactly are you trying to, what would you like to notice the most? Basically, uh, with the idea that it was the pilot that kind of was in a situation. Um, she's going to try to look to see if she can find any communications that seem off to try to connect the two with Vector. So, you do see there's a few... Uh, so that type of comm would, may not necessarily be... Actually, there would be a few comms from Victor directly on the ship. Uh, they're not addressed to the pilot or the captain the moment they're really ad addressed to specific people that were on the vessel at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and with that in and out, you do see, based on the time frame that you got from previous disappearance, those time do match the time that there was some detour, some transporter being cut off here and there. Uh, okay. So there is a connection between the two. Yeah. 
the, the pilot may not necessarily know. They're just doing their job of piloting for what you can mm -hmm. see from those logs. Whether or not they're implicated further in, that's a question of actually socializing, talking to pilots. But mm -hmm. uh, are, We're still docked, right? Uh, yes, you're currently docked, uh, but you you have a feeling based on the general, you know the general routine of certain ships, mm -hmm. like the time that they take, uh, that what needs to be done is pretty much already done here. For the most part, there's mm -hmm. a few things that are being finalized. Okay. Uh, she's going to look to the others. Mm -hmm. I think we need to get off this ship, get back onto Oz, and head to the station. I think that's where we need to go. We're following the ship. Uh, no, we're going to the station. That uh, they kind of stealthily broke off of and tried to wipe all information about the stop. So, so speaking of that, should we check the current logs to see if anybody is scheduled to go there? I mean, I can Make look. There's nobody currently on the current logs scheduled for detour. And usually those right. uh, you do see that from those the timestamp that certain days are added. They're just added like midway through. Mm -hmm. Because it takes a lot of time you. between stations, right? Okay. Yeah. Alright. So. Stay on the ship or go back. No, we can go. I just if way. there was someone we could get out of here right now, I would say do that. But uh, yeah, I don't know if there's anyone on board currently then. Okay, this is starting. Pieces are coming together. This is the transport. We've got the information from the transport to take him to the station. We now know the station, so we don't need the transport. We can just fly off on a... I just whacked the hell out of my microphone. Yeah, um, you did. Yeah, you did. Now for X. Anyway, uh, we can go off and away on our own ship. Um... So we can thank them very much for the ride here. We'll be getting <laughs> off at, at this uh, our destination. Goodbye. Yeah. You're now leaving Tycho Station. You're now entering Tycho Station within the same day. <laughs> My it's sister the had an emergency. We had to go back. All right. So would we be needing to go relay this to everyone that we've already talked to at the station in terms of like the church and the science community and your sister. Des has been sending messages to her sister to have that go to where it needs to be. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I think we're in the bell. We're in the bounds and regulations of screw it. Let's uh, let's go run our ship into their home base. All mm -hmm. right. It's more fun that way. And we get our ship and our sleeping quarters. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll head down to the engine room and like hand riff a big ass box of chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these lemon cookies are delightful. Thank you. Are they tart enough? They said they were pretty. They had like real, actual, like earth bread lemons in it. I don't know. They're expensive. It tastes pretty good. Oh, I ain't complaining. Thank you. Chocolate's okay. great. Perfect. There's right. eight pounds. Well, there's ten pounds of chestnut coffee in the storeroom, <laughs> along with like That's four or five coffee. boxes of like just random parts that were like basically be adjunct. And I just brought all of those because there was no specifics as to the extra parts needed. And I have no idea about science anything. <laughs> So I just got, you know, like five big boxes of junk parts that could be used for all sorts of shit. And you just see Des look at one of them, kind of look through, open it up and go, oh, that is going to be fun. Lola, I think I might make you a droid to help you when you paint outside. Yeah. All right. Well. So for sake of brevity, I'm yeah. assuming you're going back to your ship. Mm -hmm. Leaving Tycho Station mm -hmm. in, towards Urkula Station. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what you would probably know from that station is it's, it's the largest asteroid, right? It's just big rock in space. Uh, about it, it's it's a very blocky shape. 
asteroid. It's not a beautiful sphere. It's about 260 by 220 by 215 kilometer. Like it's big. It's it's big. Um, you may have just by traveling around, you know that it it works with an artificial spin gravity. So just low like 0.28 g in there. It's not super big. Um, and for the sake of fact that it will probably take a couple days to get there, because space is big, even with Epstein Drive, uh, you are quickly on fa uh, on approach towards the station. Uh, it's uh, it give you a, like take you like over it would take you over a week to get there, just to give you like uh, time to like spin around, reduce your burn, and not just smash into the rock that would be very bad unless that's your plan then i'm not gonna stop you uh, what's the joke what's the joke <laughs> do not smash the ship i worked very hard on the artwork so yeah, let's not how do you uh how do you choose to approach this station it's not necessarily owned by any uh, it's not under any OPA association right now, or it's not belong, it doesn't belong to Mars. Uh, what do you wish? How do you wish to approach the station? Do you want to just go in guns blazing, or try to ail somebody is, from the station? This is a private security station, right? Uh, they may be running things here and there. It's like it's a mostly scientific scientist base, from what you may have known. It's well, we have the ID R and D, yeah. right? So we have we have that. Um, so we can either go in pretending like we are these individuals, or mm -hmm. we could go in and just the fun route. It's up to you. I'm just piloting. Mm -hmm. Well, can you give me a, a reading on how many people you can see within? Uh, I mean, this asteroid. On Arcalona Station, it varies from time to time. And there is this local population, like just general worker. It's like a few thousand. Mm. We may have to at least play a certain part, at least mm -hmm. until we get to a, the right position. Yeah. Can we just tell them we're from Tycho and that we have paperwork for some of the scientists? Well, we have our IDs, the, um, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the, cause this is the, this station is the same place, right? The private, the private firm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's the same place. So this yeah. would give us easy access to wherever we need to go. Yeah. yeah. Then just let them know that we're, you know, I would just radio the station and be like, we need a dock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get ID yeah, numbers. It's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Let's try that. Let's try the diplomatic approach first. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. I'm going to end up talk first, then guns blazing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. So what do you see as your approach? And you probably pick it up on your long range scan, just trying to check the, the big rock. There's the main part of the station where most people are living. Uh, as it's going to a uh, rotation and you're observing it, you do see a... Um, not so register little uh, docking area just on the other side of the rock so okay. I yeah i presume we would dock there uh mm -hmm. whichever uh there's technically two docking area one towards the main place and one on the other side which is smaller and a bit more uh, covert let's go in the back side it's usually a good choice <laughs> yeah Right. Gotta sneak in, you know, kind of a thing. Not like we're not here to be uh, yeah. intrusive on anyone. Yeah. So I'm assuming, being clever people, you will like try to shut down as many things that would ping you on the radar, such mm -hmm. as like uh, your drive and your transponder. Yeah, yeah our signatures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just go go as dark as possible and just EVA slow down over there. Uh, off everything except for life support. Yeah, essentially run on the min minimal things, right? 
Uh, Dez, give me a piloting test. That is a... That will be a, a, target, a target number, let's say, 15. Because you're trying to be very sneaky about it. Do you have like a plus nine to piloting or something? Uh, plus six. Oh. If it's piloting Goober, it's a plus seven. So that's... I'm uh... asleep in my hammock in my room. Oh. Yeah, you would you would find things that go very weird in your hammock because gravity is no longer mm -hmm. taking a lot of space. So let's see. Is that I have a strap that goes around my waist. <laughs> Fifteen with uh, two twos and a five on the drama dice. Okay. So smooth like uh, smoothly, you just get in there and just nudge. And approach that docking and that not so open area. It's not really a, like full on docking, mm -hmm. or at least unless you want to try to act into the docking and open it from there. But just like essentially outside of there, a little access door if needed. But you may have to uh, do a wee bit of a spacewalk if you, unless you want to try to override their system. So, override or spacewalk? Uh, spacewalk I mean, works for me. I'm pretty good at spacewalking. Mm. Do it every time I got a pain. Okay. I'm going to stay on the ship for a few seconds. Mm hmm. All right, okay. I guess we uh, gear up for what are our vac suits? Somebody, I'll be right back. You need to do turn and burn, right? All right, so putting on your vac suit, who's going on t onto Urkelona Station? I know Phoenix uh, is. Sure. Uh, yeah. No, I'm going. Lola and Ref, D. Are... I'm gonna go with them, but I'm gonna be like, Lola, is this on right? Like, is my suit yeah. on right? No, you're, Am I on um, right? Mm -hmm. And is this, are we good? Am I all right? Like, I don't want to yeah, go outside yeah, the on. ship yet. I have a Hold feeling on, that the vac suit is a bit too big for you. <laughs> I'm just gonna let me tighten a few things down here and there you go. Yeah, making sure your vac suit is on properly is the wise thing to do. Make sure. All right, you you're breathe, good. You're good. You breathe calmly at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Don't panic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She immediately way. panics because someone told her not to panic. Is this what your... do you mean, don't panic? What's going to happen? What the hell are you talking no, about? No, no, what do you no, mean, no. don't I'm panic? Don't, if you don't panic, you'll start hyperventilating and mm. you'll use up the oxygen you have quicker. Mm. Exactly. Just focus on going straight to mm -hmm. the where you're going, okay? okay? I don't know where I'm going. I'm just following y'all. Mm. Yep. Okay. Nope. Just, just, just here. We'll, we'll do it. We'll do a secondary tether where I, you will be tethered to me as well as to the tether to the ship, so that there's, yeah. you know. I mean, your, your, like your ship is landed on the rock. That would be probably the safest way. Otherwise, you would just be yeah. falling on the rock. Mm. Yep. Which right, we're suck. not tethered to the ship, but you'll, you'll be, you'll be tethered to me. All right. So, like, mm. we're gonna be fine. Mm. Okay. Yeah, look at me, look at me. Nothing's going to happen to you, okay? That's D, my job. You'll be fine. I've actually been out. Before yeah. I go, I have to look, take a nap. Look, we're... <laughs> look, right. it's it's fine. Here, I'll put on some, some classic music for you uh, to, to help calm your nerves. You've been hit by, you've been struck by a smooth <laughs> criminal. Dealer, old classic from Earth, right? Um, we're, we're, we're we're equivalently moonwalking. I've heard yeah. this is a good tune for that. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm assuming for everybody except the their dev already went like on on space. Used to D was fairly mm -hmm. fairly new on just feeling all sort of gravity and push and pull and things like that. Just give me a just a quick willpower self discipline. Uh, test just to see how you're handling your very first pace wall where horizon is pretty much very weird um eight twelve thirteen with uh no doubles and a four on the drama die okay so with 
you know, Lola's and your your crew's encouragement. You're like, you know how to focus, and you're like, okay. But you're like currently outside in a vac suit on a rock with no atmosphere. If you look up, it's just the black and emptiness. And maybe this, uh, if you're able to see, depending on the angle of the rock, uh, the sun. But it's, it is a weird feeling. And it may be about like less than 100 meter from where you are, you're able to see essentially a metal structure built in into part of the rock that would grant some access to part of the station at least. Walking over there, uh, you uh, you are at the door. From when you came down with your scan, you are able to see like actually a section where you could just pull out a ship from, and there's also like this little access door. So. All right, so I guess we head to the access door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is currently locked. It's, oh. yeah, it's... Would our badge allow us access in there? Uh, you. It doesn't. It asks like, like swipe thing, but ask for like a, 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 a pin ID as well. They look over at Des. This is you. <laughs> yep, I got it. Do it, but you do your thing. Let's do it. It's eight zero zero eight five. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I was gonna be... say those guys looked like the type who would actually write the pin code on the card. <laughs> kind of mm -hmm. <laughs> looks at the back and says eight six seven five three zero nine. Yep, no. <laughs> that would be a 14 with a one on the uh, drama die. To Agda system? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I'd say, yeah, you're very, like, it, it takes you some time, uh, probably long and longer than you would have liked to. And you just hope that you no know, nobody do, does a pass and spot the ship. But... You eventually manage to uh, unlock that and get into the station. I also need somebody to roll a d6 for me. Because we just will. hit turn 20. Three. Three. <laughs> okay. What will happen at turn three? Uh, with a train. Turn 20. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna add more fun. Thank you. So as you we're all fortunate souls. Oh sorry. <laughs> when the GM smiles, we're all fucked. Mm -hmm. I mean, based on That's the chart, not... at turn twenty, if you roll between one and three, it is a major effect. Okay. Uh, so I get to introduce either a challenge or hazard, uh something that the uh, opposing people may be no, no, uh, noting things like that uh, so let's just say that you may not notice at first but that Akin Itep did get some attention uh, there's some lights just blinking in and out you're not sure if it's normal or signal here Maybe be watched. What's the order in which you're going in through that? Essentially, like, no access tunnel. Uh, I am sure. smack in the middle of everyone. I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm front as security. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm so, bringing up the rear. Phoenix. Des would probably be second to last. Des, uh, second to last. Uh, that means right uh, above uh, Lola's, Lola's behind Phoenix, like, fists up, like... <laughs> Maybe yeah, like I one fist up, one one hand with a spray paint to like spray it in someone's eyes, like so pepper spray. No pistol at all, just you know, fist and spray paint. I will spray this in someone's eyes, and it will hurt. Oh, yeah. here I would have my assault rifle though. Yeah. So it's, 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 yeah. Like if you have any like uh, like armor or weaponry in your equipment, feel free to bring it on board here. So I have two knives and the ship's pistol because that's all I've got. Yeah. Because I'm hey, broke out. Ship yeah. pistol will do the trick. All I you need sometimes is a well placed shot. Yeah. Des has I got brass pistol. knuckles and spray paint. Yeah. And Goober is actually looking behind us. And if Goober senses 
since there's picks up any movement from behind us, it'll beep. All right. So you're currently in this access zone, which is very long. And as you're moving, like the lights go on off just to essentially what is behind you is turned off and basically spotting where you are right now, just to conserve energy. Um, you eventually come, come across like an, an, like another essentially airlock door uh, that you're able to uh, uh, probably open pressurize and get in the station proper. Uh, that would not be too difficult to just reopen, get in there. Yeah, uh, give me a act if you're trying to give me a technology test just to see. Uh, 16. 16, yeah. No problem. You're able to just act into that airlock. So moving forward from here, if you wish to, you can, you don't, your vac suit is just there, but there is air in this location. Oxygen, so that you're able to breathe if you want to. Um, and after that, it essentially sprawled to like corridor access uh, with a few uh, actually, if somebody wants to see what they're seeing more than that, just outside of the corridor, you can always give me a precision seeing. Okay, I can do that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Or not. Uh, um, that's 9, 10, 11. That's tw I rolled a 12. Uh, I did roll double threes, and one of the threes is on the drama die. Ooh. Okay. Mm. 16 over here. Any stun point in there? 16 as well. And if, if, if you generate stun point, feel free to use them. Anything above a 10 will be good. Here. Um, Got a question. Can Des pull up what Goober is seeing on her wrist communicator so can, she can see what's happening behind us? Yeah, right behind you, uh, there's no traffic at all. Okay. Yeah. Oh, of course. I roll a... Let's see. That would be... 17 with uh, four on the um, drama die with double fours. Okay, and are you leaving more or less Goober behind just to like keep an eye on on your back, or are you bringing more or less along with you? Goober is uh, right above her head, and she's kind okay. of like holding on to his little uh, hand as we're going down, just to make sure uh, Goober stays with him. Okay, perfect. All right. And uh, any of you rolled above uh, 14 again? So you do spot some uh, cameras that would record any sort of traffic here and there. We're being watched. Yeah. Uh, Lola, spray can. <laughs> I'll hit the other one. All right. Well, if there was no attention on you, there's some now for sure. <laughs> uh, and. You can take a path left or right. It's up to you. Sprawling. Um, I will actually look both ways for it if you ask what people will see, because of course corridors is where people do surprise attacks. So you always want to make sure Dang. it's empty before we cross. So I would look, make sure there's no visible assailants. Yeah, doors and corridors side. where to get you. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, that is going to be uh, 13. 13. Uh, you don't spot any mo anybody at the moment uh, mm -hmm. in, in those cor uh, quarter. I think it's clear. Yeah. Which way, left or right? I'm always a fan of going left when we need to. And on the left wall. All right, left wall we go. All right. Making your way left you do eventually come across like other door um another door cl close completely um no problem that it just you don't need to act and it just open it and it leads you to this fairly vast room with all glass wall and there seems to be people working in there uh various scientists uh it's very well lit uh, you do see in it a couple uh, armed personnel. 
Uh, and do we do we so see any one of them is is looking right at you as like your open door. And as soon as you you uh, open that door, he, he left his rifle towards you. Who are you, and what are you doing here? Who am I? Who are you? What are you doing here? And he, and you can see here, like, like listen, I guess it didn't come. Resist the ID. You can see it for yourself. Yeah. Are, are approaching him? Keeping an eye out for his body language to the second that I see anything that looks like a possible plan of attack or then I'll go to action. But yeah, I'll slowly approach with the ID. Yeah. As you're walking in a bit more, if you're walking in a bit more, you will see like there's other security personnel around you. Uh, nearby, and they all have. They're essentially like receiving communication, communicating at the same time. Come show me that. Here, yeah, all yours. And takes the ID. And looks around, and saying the all, saying all the other to any other personal. There's about three other people in this room, while security people beside the scientists, and they're. We're just gonna roll a quick initiative and turn this into an action scene because your entrance was not as smooth as you would like. <laughs> I kind of assume so. But My initiative is just roll the three die and add them together. Yeah. Yeah. What? Plus uh, your dexterity. dexterity. Isn't it? Correct. Okay. Two. All right. Three. Uh, what's four. Eight. Uh, twelve with. Double threes and a three on the stunt okay. die. Or, uh, death a, a 12. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 13 with double fives, five on the drama die. Okay. Uh, it, there's some, uh, stunts that you can use for, like, around that. Like, so, um, feel free to console that table. Let's see, mm -hmm. where are you? Uh, that's Lola. I'm going for a disarm. All right. Uh, Phoenix, what did you roll? A beautiful 21. 21. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a uh, riff. Three sixes. So I got I'm one. rocking a 10. That's good. And D. An 8 with a 2 on the drama die. All right. So. There is some uh, stunt ability that you can use, especially in a situation like that. Uh, let's go into com uh, just regular combat. Me you can either use melee or... Currently, there's not anybody in melee range. Except maybe like the one person who took the ID from Phoenix. Yeah, uh, that was the person I was going to beat up. <laughs> and with um, that 21, yeah, you would have the top off. Uh, now, would Des be able to take cover? Yeah, there would be some uh, limited cover here. Uh, probably okay. like some... Let's spice up that music a little bit, shall we? Um... Is that a trick? All right, top of the round, uh, Phoenix. All right, so when I see the individual approaching in a more aggressive faction, they, he could tell mm -hmm. that the gig is up. So he's going to essentially, uh, Alicia Flurry of Blows on this individual. And I'm going to use five of my six points on Lethal Blow to try okay. to uh, bring down uh, this individual. All right, so uh, did you roll for your attack? Uh, not yet. Yeah, that's, that would be a fighting... Uh, roll for fighting. If you have a brawl, uh, brawl yep. uh, you can add that. Brawl. Ooh, and do you have any any weaponry in your hand that will help you with your, your brawling? Uh, well, I, I did have the gun, but I'm actually going. More okay, for, like, so I would, I would consider it as an improvised weapon for the blunt damage. All right. Uh, 
15 plus 6. 21? 21 will beat their defense, yep. All right. Uh, so did I get to roll? Okay. So roll a d6, add plus 1. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, add 4. Okay. And the, the, ar for, uh, the armor, so it doesn't do as much as you would like, but uh, feel, feel free to add your lethal blow. Actually, no, that's a different... That would be a different roll entirely. You know what? It because is. you roll so well on that uh, uh, initiative roll, I will let you add those uh, stun points as well there if you want to do that lethal blow. Oh, oh gotcha. Because it would be a shame to have like s so many good stun points on j just that, right? So. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, what, what would you do with it? Uh, so thank you. Uh, so that's an extra nine points. Okay. Um, plus, All right. I add um, plus four because of my fighting. Uh, yep. You you have okay. fighting. Yeah, sure. Oh, Brawly. So it'd be a plus six actually. It'd be a plus six. Okay. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So five plus four plus six. All right. Lola, uh, it's you. Des, you are on deck. They didn't roll super um, well. Yeah. So I'm going, you know, brass knuckles, and I'm going. It's it's nothing pretty about it. It's street fighting. I'm gonna bring my knee, try to bring the knee up into his crotch and disarm the gun from his arm okay, hands. So you're gonna move, use your minor action uh, to move towards one of them and try to disarm it. Yeah. All right. Roll for your brawling. And see if you can disarm right. that one. I do have focus in brawling. Uh, does my do my brass knuckles give me anything? Uh, if you hurt them, it's gonna hurt a bit more. Okay. All right. So brawling. Okay. So that's triple fives. So okay. That's Fifteen plus. Uh, fighting is two, so seventeen, and brawling is another two, so nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. And roll for your damage. Roll a, a D, one D. Uh, do, do you have any stat for your brass knuckle already? Uh, no. All right. Uh, no, it, I just have. If there's, it, do I just roll a D six? Just or? roll a D six and add plus two. Okay. Uh, I rolled a six, so eight. Eight. All right. Plus your um, your fighting. Yeah. Okay. So and yeah, I'm, you're I'm able ahead. to like just punch him very hard. Um. And I did go for a disarm on yeah. that, um, so which means if I won an opposed melee attack roll, yep. I throw his weapon 1d6 plus my strength meters away in a direction of my choice. Oh yeah, you do. I roll like absolute garbage okay. on that opposed strength. <laughs> Whatever his nice. weapon was, you said it was, was it a rifle? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to throw it back towards Riff. All right, roll d6. Uh, three meters. So three meters away. Nine feet. Yeah. Yeah, it would probably get like close to Riff. And you're like, for, I'm assuming for the most part, like within like 10 feet of each other. Mm -hmm. Except maybe Phoenix, which is a bit further in, right? And it's a fairly large room. Uh, there's shit happening, and the scientist people that are in there are starting to notice that there's things going on. <laughs> oh, you don't say. <laughs> All right. Okay, perfect. Des. Okay, uh, so for the initiative, she's going to drop down and kind of get herself as best behind cover mm -hmm. and then activate Goober, find uh, the one that's closest, and go pew pew. All right, so as out of. the gun appears. All right, there's four target right now. There's one currently engaged with Lola, there's one currently engaged with Phoenix, and there's other two mm -hmm. that are about to fire upon you. Do you want to go against one of those? Yeah, one of those. Okay. Uh, roll. Let's go left. All right, roll for your uh, a PQ. attack with Goober. That's so bad. Okay, so that would be. Twelve. Twelve. Total. Yep, that's it. Uh, you shoot at him, and it's it's right at the moment. Like with Goober, you're you're used to like take a bit more time. And it just like missing by like na her hair, it's... but you got its attention. That's for sure. Your drone got its attention. 
I'm just picturing the googly eyes just yeah. freak out when it shoots. So, in the order that they are, there's four security guard right now. One is going to try to just straight up, like, currently disarm. It's going to try to just straight up, like, punch Lola. Uh, what's your what's your defense, Lola? Mm -hmm. Probably not great, uh, if I remember correctly. I'm not, I'm, I'm very squishy. It's a 12. 12? All right. So, knocks you for... Five point. Uh, do you have any okay. armor? Yeah, I think you have one armor because if you still have your back suit. I have one armor. Okay, yep. so you will remove poor fortune point. You like, like you. It doesn't like. Okay. Hurt like hurt you so much, but like just. It could have been way okay. worse. All right. What happens when I run out of fortune points after getting knocked? Uh, very bad things. Oh great. Cool. Love yeah. that. Neat. You're just you're, whatever uh, thing will happen to you will not be as so lucky, especially if um, one will sh try to go for. So, face, were you trying to disarm that man earlier, or just? Ooh. Oh, disarm. Yeah. Um, yes, if I could. Okay. Did you do your opposed brawl test against him? I don't think so. Yeah. I'm gonna yell at the guy who just hit me. Your arm, you hit like your arms are made of pool noodles. <laughs> uh, bra, that's straight, right? Yeah. Okay. A 14. All right. Yeah, he's able to keep his weaponry. He can roll very well. Uh, would 15 hit your defense? Oh, yeah. All right. With a rifle. Uh, what's the... I win. Yep. And rifle stat. It's 3d6 plus 1. Um, okay, so 5, 6, 2, plus 1. So... Yeah, you have armor on you, right? Yeah, one, um, one armor. Okay, so that would be 6... 12, 13 on your fortune, so you can re uh, you can remove, uh, if you have any toughness yes. uh, and okay. armor, please uh, deduct that so that you don't take the full brunt of that. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Toughness and armor, you said? Yeah. So 13 total? Yeah. Well, what's your toughness? Uh, my toughness is uh, 3. Three. No, no, no. My top is to be. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's a three. Yeah, three. Top. So you remove four from that. So, okay. it, it, like, it turns like you're trying to in the middle of that brawl, it turns around and try to like shoot you, and it just graze your leg. But, you know, former Martian, Martian or Marine, you know, it's not it's not a little flesh wound like that will that will deter you. Hmm. Um. And one will try to take out, down the drone. What's the, tr the drone defense? Uh, shit. I don't think we actually look at that. I'm gonna assume it's less than 14. Yeah. Yeah, but... that drone is down. Dude, they don't have any fortune no! point. No. And one will try to... Uh, oh, will use their minor movement to go towards... Riff, who now has a rifle in his hand. And try to taste him. Uh, seven, eight, twelve for your defense. Uh, yeah, that hits. Well, wait, does armor get calculated into defense? Nope. Okay, it, it, then yeah, it hits. I have eleven. So that's one d six plus one penetrating damage, which bypassed the armor. Yep. Uh, for five, so you take five fortune point. But you're right in front of that man right now with a rifle in your hand. And it sucks. Because <laughs> he get, just got shot. But you're still up. Okay. Um, I'm at... Alright. I think that's right. Okay. Perfect. 
Riff with D on deck. Oh, all right. Well then, you're Rift. you have that man right in front of you right now. I was about to say he's just gonna point blank and fire go it for it. All right. Uh, so firearm is dexterity. It's accuracy. Accuracy. Yeah, and if you have any rifle oh, focus in there. Yeah. No. Um. All right. So. That is a 14 with double fours. Yeah. Not all from a die. So uh, I'm gonna do first guns. Okay. Um, it, and the rifle is 3d6 plus one. Of 3d6 plus one. Yeah, you, so, are, you actually like are able to like fire towards him. With that's accuracy. um that's nine damage. Nine. And, I'm gonna do. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, that's. And I'm gonna do with the double fours. I'm gonna do short burst. Ignore one point of your opponent's toughness. Okay, that's. Yeah, that man is down. Nice. <laughs> you, nice. you just like turn around as he was trying to like taste. You just like. Probably pop him. Like on the side mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, he's not per se, per se dead right now. Maybe dying. Down. I only care about yeah. I only care about going down. But you know, <laughs> without immediate medical attention, yeah. All right, D. You're muted. You're right muted, Ben. Still muted. Uh, you're still muted. Nope, still You're muted. Still muted. I don't know. Still muted, yeah. Why is my microphone? Okay, now I can pick you up. <laughs> now I can pick you up. Good. <laughs> like smashing the shit out of the button, and it's not taking. Um. Okay. Was not looking to walk in here and fight. Do I see any of the scientists we are looking for? Give me a quick perception seeing. Uh, that sucks. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's a lot of of lab coat in here. A lot of lab coats in here. Yeah, there's a lot of people okay. with lab coats in here. But we're under the impression that the Taken people are here, right? Yeah, most likely. I am just going to yell, Yo, we're from Tycon. Where the fuck are the missing people at? And I'm just going to say it loud enough that it just echoes through the room because at this yeah. point, our cover is blown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going right. to get real loud about it. Like, I'm not looking to fight. I'm looking to start getting a revolt started and get people out of here. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Fantastic. Anything you want to do while you have like your crew members just trying to take care of their security around you? You, st I'm just gonna consider that as a free I'm action. Okay, because I'm yelling for anybody to be like, "Yo, we're trying to get yeah. you out of here. Help!" You do notice that you don't hear any sounds from the other side of the glass, right? So communication may be a bit rough or muffled. Oh, they're through the glass. Okay, I thought yeah. they were all in the room. Yeah. Um. Okay. Break of the glass. Break of the glass. <laughs> yeah, I want to break That's the glass. It. Can I like take a, like sh take a shot at the glass, but way up high, so that it doesn't hurt anybody, but the glass will start to break. Yeah, absolutely. Roll me a accuracy test. Target accuracy. number for that. Eleven. Okay, accuracy. As long as you don't miserably fail, it should be good. Yeah, well, I don't have any pluses to my accuracy, so. If you shoot one of the scientists, you know, it happens. 10. 10. All right, you, you, didn't, you, didn't have fa you can spend a fortune, some of your fortune to increase that. And you don't don't forget that you also have, amongst all of you, five uh, shared fortune that you can use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to then I will go ahead and it, use a point of it to make it the 11. So uh, what are you uh, like? Which die are you moving to what number? Because that's the uh, amount I'm... of di that's the amount, amount of point of your the number that you're going to be doing it. Uh, Taking like whatever if it's like you're going for like a, tr a four, it's gonna be four, four points. I'm gonna take my two and roll it to a three. Okay, so, so three, three points. Three fortune points. Okay. Take them from the shared pool. We haven't even touched it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, then I'll just leave it then, and then. And roll for your one d six of damage. Okay. Three. Three. Uh, it pierced through glass. Uh, it's, it's not, it's not sh gonna be shattering because it's, uh, but you have a feeling that a few shots in there 
could probably allow you to break that glass if needed. Yeah, I'm gonna be like, we gotta break the glass, we gotta get them out of here. All right, fantastic. Phoenix, back on you. Lola, you're on deck. You All are right. currently engaged with this man that just shot you. Oh, I'm returning fire. <laughs> All right. So I'll be bringing my rifle back up and blast him right in the kidney. A roll for oh. accuracy with your rifle. All right, so I got a five fives, uh, a three fives. So that would be 15 plus two, uh, 17 to hit. Yeah, that, that definitely does do the hurt. And All that right. ger also generates some stun point if you want to use them. Yes, I'm going to take it back again. Same. By the way, we are currently at turn 24 because you've been rolling and generating so many stun points. Yeah. So if people want to bring that down or up, Please go ahead. We're in danger. Yeah, we've yeah. been in danger. <laughs> so I'm, oh, yeah. I'm going to roll damage for this first, and if mm -hmm. he dies, then I'll bring my second attack to someone else. Um, okay. <sighs> Twelve points of damage from the uh, from the rifle. Okay, uh, and it, it did take some damage earlier, and uh, with his uh, uh, toughness. What are you using? With your, are you using a stun point on that at all? Yes, I was using uh, the long burst, which is going to make I'm going to make a second attack. Okay. Uh, if it's a, if yeah, that would be up, enough to just bring that. That would be enough to bring that man down. Okay. So did I? Do I need to make the second attack against him? Or oh, he's down right now? Right? Yeah. You can. Okay. Yeah, there's still two more behind you. All right. The so one that's next will be. I'm going to see if I can shoot at the individual who is targeting. Uh, death, uh, or the the drone. The, the drone. Yeah, Goober is dead. Goober. Yeah, Goober's dead. Yeah, Goober. Long live Goober. It's alright, Goober too will be better. <laughs> Requiesce yep. got in touch. Alright, uh, roll for a separate attack for that one. What's our turn at right now? Uh, currently 24. Uh, so, so I rolled three sixes. Uh, alright, make it 25. But feel free to use those stun point. Uh, yeah, I still get to use it. I would have donated them. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, I'm just waiting for it to 30. That's going to be fun. Uh, On the other hand, once it 30, it goes back to zero. So I don't, I don't want that to happen. Okay. Uh, well, we might all be dead at that point. So yeah, that was, mm -hmm. uh, that'd be uh, 13 points of damage to that one as well. I have a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to use. Um, did I, did I do another long burst? No, you, you can only generate like a stun point for it once. For once? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so with the extra six, so with the six I got from this one, where does that go? Did it just disappear? Or... Yeah. Okay. Until you. Uh, so that... All right. So then I have two more left. The other two I will use. Um... Overwatch. Your opponent suffers. Uh, negative one to attack rolls per SPU to the start of their next turn. So that'd be for the person uh, All right. who was shooting at death. So they get um, minus two penalty. All right, that's good. And uh, you've definitely like hit them in the shoulder. That's probably okay. that's what that's what's going to give them that this vintage. They're not down, but they're hurt. All right. Uh, fantastic. That's a lot of hurt. Lola, and death on deck. Um, you are engaged so, with a man. Mm hmm. I, I disarmed him. Mm hmm. Now I just want to take his head and bring it to my knee. All right. <laughs> Roll a brawling test against his defense. Yep. This is, uh, you have on the streets of Earth, we call this violence. Yeah. You have to beat an uh, 11, so it's good. I have to beat an 11? Okay. Yep. Uh, so I, it's fighting, brawling. Yep. Twelve. Twelve. All right. Roll that one d6 plus one. I thought it was plus two. Uh, you're not using your brass, brass knuckle right now. All right. Yep. Uh, so that would be a six because I got a five, so six. So head me. Um. So. Yeah, 
Uh, you are able to put him enough, like, some damage that he's blinded, like, on his ass right now. Uh, because there was some damage done to him prior, so. Yep. Stay on the ground. Hmm. Stay down. We All right. get those scientists before more people show up! Perfect. I'm trying. I had someone on me. Death. Riff. And uh, death. If you can... Riff, if you can find a way to blow up the entire damn station, too, that'd be pretty cool. It would be. Mm hmm. All right. It would be Death's turn. I think that she's temporarily. Uh... Uh, so she sent what she's doing. Yeah. Uh, roll 114. So that's 8, 9, full 7 attack against the glass. Uh, yeah, that breaks the glass starting to fall apart easily there thank you Des. and there's still that one man standing somebody roll me a d4 a d6 one well riff do you feel lucky uh never he has a he has a minus two though, right? For the, the yeah. attack roll. Yeah, he has a minus oh, cool. two. So six plus four plus four minus two. So that's six, ten, fourteen. Twelve does twelve hit your defense. Yes, it does. How lucky do you feel right now? I d again don't. <laughs> oh, uh, this is fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. I'm fine. How are you? This is fine. Uh, six plus nine. Okay. Damage. Uh, oh, that that minus, would like minus, minus your toughness and armor. Okay. That's so on that's that's the 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 the, 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 uh, the minus is on the attack itself. No, I yeah, I also have. Toughness and armor is minus two, so I would take seven. Yeah. That's what I was yeah. saying. Uh, I'm still up. I'm good. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He, he grazes you. It's, it's going to hurt. You're going to have to probably patch yeah. your suit up before you go in the vacuum again. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Return fire. And return fire. Because that's your turn. Yeah. Yep. All right, uh, so that's gonna be. Um, there's gonna be a 12 with double threes and then a five on the drama. Um, I just and, bought lower one. <laughs> yeah, uh, and. Uh, I'm going to use, uh, let's see, so uh, 12 to hit on the guy. And then I'm going to use strafe as my stunt. All right. Um, and then damage is uh, 10. 10. All right. And that meant, I don't think it was heard before. Um, oh no, I, I did. I shot. Yeah, you shot him. Uh, yeah, so was, he's down uh, as well. Okay, um, and then I'm gonna use strafe to move to the door where yeah. the scientists are at. All right, so yeah, all those four guards are are down right now. You do start hearing the science blare, and um, log gun procedure being engaged. Uh, Ostal on board. Shoot on sight. Yeah, mm. uh, uh, depressurizing in T minus two. So for those that have no vac suit or are not in an area where it's safe, it's gonna suck. How uh, do you plan? No, so you're breaking that window easily, like that round, which they were more or less safe behind. Uh, what is your plan of escape? Because you do, you're able to like scan around, you do see like the people that you were looking for. Easily. I start yelling, everybody vac suits now. Okay. And like, because I'm sure everyone's got an emergency one somewhere to start getting scientists into them. I'm going to grab the closest roll of duct tape and fix Rift's suit. 
Thank you. Yeah. I mean, in, in, in Vax, you all have like a specific patch if you just put there in mm -hmm. yeah. blue. Yeah. I am yeah. patching his shit right now. Yeah. And some of you are heard it's going to be shitty to run properly. Uh, get us outside in zero G and I can pull people. I didn't get hurt. So. I got punched. This I got right. shot twice. All right. I'm just patching up real, like a real balloon. quick. It's fine. Somebody just somebody just for the sake of like searching for the vac suit for everybody for the people that are not silly your crew. Uh, roll me just a quick real uh, search uh, investigation searching, a, per a perception searching. Why a perception searching? Yeah. Um, um, I probably failed, but it was triple twos. Yeah. Um, you're, you're you're busy with yourself right now. Yeah, I'm I'm busy with my suit. Seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, you are yeah, able. Yeah, I rolled an eighteen. <laughs> you are able to find some comp compartment where there's like essentially you no. Know, uh, some some vac suit. It will take like a minute or so to put them on. Uh, so let's hope that people can hold their breath. Just well, put it on and go. We got <laughs> yeah. a ship. Just put it on and go that way. Follow, follow me. Follow, follow me. Follow. Follow them. <laughs> follow the follow the large one and the small one. I'm like helping people into suits as best I can yeah, yeah. from what I know as to how to put them on and like shoving people in the hallway and directing them towards the ship. Mm, I'll keep an eye out for any uh, future guards that might be appearing uh, okay. taking undercover. Uh, uh, but yeah. All right. And, I'm going to assume anybody and, that was here against yeah. their will is like in a rush to get out. Yeah. Mm. And you, you can hear, like, uh, you can see that there is uh, on one of the uh, one of the doors, like glass door, um, glass door, it's a big metal door with a glass slide. And uh, as you're like about to like shove people out of there, there are some more uh, guards coming in with vac suit on. Uh, we have company. Make it yeah. quick, everyone. The scientists are getting out real quick. I'm just gonna assume that pilot is gonna book the first, mm -hmm. just to make yeah. sure that. Yeah, Dad said she was headed for the yeah. ship, and she was gonna bring as many scientists as she could with yeah. her. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, there, there are All doors right. opening. They're starting to fire. Uh, who's the last one out the door? The last people out the door. Probably me because I'm going to be the one that's watching okay. to try to keep everybody safe because I know we have hurt people. Yeah, they're going to start, mm -hmm. uh, you know, firing in your general direction. What's your defense, D? That's eleven. It's 11, real low. I am squishy, six, baby. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I just made eleven. Uh, I, I, I'm assuming you still have a decent amount of fortune point, right? Hmm. Sure, we'll call that decent. <laughs> Okay. Do you have ah. yeah? Do you have more than nine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, so because I have roll like exactly nine, minus whatever the armor and toughness you have. So. Me minus two. Yeah. All right. So you. Because I didn't you, take my vac suit off. So yeah. I just got my vac suit and my one toughness. I yeah. am squishy baby. <laughs> I'm good at hiding. All right. Yeah. So, also have what armor I think as well. So. Yeah. Right, so, it's one toughness and one armor. Okay. Yeah, you get shot at, like, it miss you by your... You feel at that moment you, you got super lucky. And as you're bo booking out a door, um, running, I'm just going to have everybody do a uh, roll me just a, a constitution stamina roll as you're booking it just to keep your oxygen under pressure. 14. 14. Ten. Target well, number is 10. Okay. Oof. And I, I'm just going to roll real quick for Dez. Uh, yeah, did, she's good. I just, yeah, I was going to say, I could have rolled it and it was fine. Yeah, she's good. I'm good. So some of you are like, anything that has a 10, you're good. Anything above, you know, it's even better. You're not using as much oxygen because you still have to run in in, in, in a vacuum out there, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And you're able Running to Running in book a vacuum. And avoiding getting shot. Yeah, you're getting some cover. You're good. Uh, you, you can hear... Uh, you, can't, you can hear the bullets, like, coming in your direction as they're firing. Uh, come to the, uh, the, the, the sealed door. Uh, 
bypassing the security allowed for people to to get to get in and out easily. You are now at the last like hundred meter sprint towards your ship. I'm gonna need another uh, constitution stamina from everybody. I'm gonna right. grab Riff by his shirt and pick him up off the ground because now we're in zero Gs yeah. and drag him. Because he hurt. I made it. I made it. It's fine. Yeah, target number is gonna be thirteen now. Because oh, it's, never it, mind. <laughs> but you can you can push it with some of your fortune point if you want. It's thirteen. Yeah. I got thirteen exactly. It's constitution. Yeah, constitution. I'm gonna need, time it up. I have to push it to get there, but I, I gotta push it by I, two. I don't have enough fortune to push it. So. Well, I'm dragging you. <laughs> I'm pulling you with me. I. Lola has put on some classic music for motivation again. Cause it's a thriller! <laughs> thriller! <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. Uh, I got a 16, by the way. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, can, can somebody roll for uh, Dez on that? Uh, sure. It, I got it. Dez is fine. Dez is Dez fine. Is, Any stun point generated during that? No. 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 Alright. Just making sure. I roll well when it's for Dez. <laughs> yeah. And you're making it to the ship. Uh, you're being, still being fired upon. As Dez, a pilot, somebody will need to make the decision how fast and hard she's going to book it. Yes. Yeah, the yes, answer the yes. answer to that is yes. Okay. The answer is yes. I am shoving every. I am last one on the ship. I am shoving everyone in, and I have a gun leveled at whoever gets closest if I have to. Okay. Well, you on board. You close your like your. Yeah. I'm assuming your airlock. Mm -hmm. So you know, once you like burn, no, nobody's gonna fall off. No. As a crew, how many G's away do you want to pull? I, that this is your exos. I, I, <laughs> Enough to get us out of here, Rafiki. Uh, four. Let's go four. All right. Uh, this is your exo speaking. Please hold on to... Please hold on to your butt. And nearest, your internal organs. And, and your internal organs, because this is probably going to hurt a little bit. All right. Did, Don't pass did, out. Bags will be provided. Did all of you make it to, like, your essentially CIC? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, I would be... Okay. Right. I, well, I mean, I would be just... Running my, and like my getting CIC people is on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Currently. All right. So technically, only like this, maybe like in her pilot chair. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Everybody, roll me a Constitution stamina. Target number is gonna be twelve. Twelve. Because right. that's gonna hurt. You feel uh, as the ship is burning away, you feel all your body being squished down towards the floor. It's a 10. 16. I rolled 16. a 10. 16 again. 16. Uh, Got some high cons. D, you take two uh, points. Okay. Are you still up? Yeah, I'm at like yeah. five. You're, you're, you're like starting to see black a little bit from the, the G pole. It, it sucks. And uh, Lola? Yeah, 16. I 16. Said. Riff I'm and fine. Des? Uh, enough. Enough. Uh, Fifteen. Yeah. All right. So you're you're burning away into space. Um, maybe not having engaged your transporter just on yet. Uh, you're feeling confident that you're able to escape the station and go back to Tycho, just for sake of brevity. Uh, managed to get there like a week or so later. After like a, a, a little bit, you did you know lower DG just not to kill the scientists on board uh, some of them did uh, suffer some internal injury from that it's fine you're some of them care of you're them. alive to complain Look, you're alive some of them are belter yeah. right they're not and without yeah. you know the juice they're not gonna be good in that mm -hmm. um but the, uh, uh, everybody on board survive uh you you were able to get back to taiko station he puked for like two days because of the gravity oh, up and down was not yeah D is sick as shit. It, 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 yeah, it, it did a number on you. Uh, you're able to get towards Taiko Station, no problem. Uh, reunite the, the scientists and with families and friends. Get paid handsomely by the Apostle. It's gonna 
allow to refuel the, the ship no problem if and any supplies that you may need for your next venture but yeah successfully we'll fill them in on everything with the security stuff so they know yeah. what's going on and know to get everybody off the station successfully escaping or station rescuing a missing scientist with possibly mm -hmm. a target on the back of Tamat. who knows you we know can you, always paint her you, different you, you did you did you know ruffle some fetter you know uh, yeah. We are now the Bahamut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're not Bahamut. Just, just go change and go access your transponder. Just rename the ship, which is difficult to do. Um, is, you know what? This gives me opportunities. We'll do an entirely different paint job. New murals mm -hmm. across the board. Yeah, Done. I'm sure we'll still be the only mural ship out there, but like, <laughs> hey, it's fine. You survive fine. your adventure in the vast expanse. Thank you. Yay. And Ooh. thank you for everybody that donated. Thank you, thank uh, you, thank you. We are currently at $160, $40 away from the next giveaway. Uh, so yeah, keep donating towards Extra Life. Um, every dollar count, and it does help change kids' health for sure. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go on a quick intermission. I'm pretty sure that's some lovely people. I'm just taking a look here. Uh, and yeah, uh, just stay tuned. And at about about thirty or so minutes, there's gonna be a next game, uh, GM by the Wonderful Coal. Uh, it's they're gonna be running ru uh, wagon wheel. So I've never played that. That seems to be, to be super fun. So yeah, stick around. Um, once again, big thank you to my wonderful cast that at their first space adventure in the expanse i'm just gonna do a quick shout thank for you, all of you. them uh but yeah just tell the lovely people at home uh uh who you are and where they can find you hi i'm awkwardish panda you can find me at awkwardish panda everywhere please come by my channel i have lots going Here. on raising money and doing all sorts of wild and ridiculous stuff and i just kind of want a great big thing so we're still celebrating. Come through. Awesome. Award-winning panda. Award-winning. <laughs> that way. That way for that me. One. That way. That way. That way. Oh, wait, the I'm other way for you. I'm I'm you're you're oh pointing the wrong way. Y'all are <laughs> mess. Uh, you are so messy, and I adore you all. And then actually, Kira's <laughs> yeah. over here for me. <laughs> yeah. And then, I, and then uh, Kira well, is. I'm Kira858. You can be able to find us uh, on Twitch at Kira858 for tons of different TTRPG content. We have probably the first ever DD campaign featuring Sex Tufflets and Fractured Destiny that will be coming out on Saturday. Uh, we have uh, a DD campaign in the realm of Diablo 3, A Mist Light of Shadow, that's on Sunday. Uh, we have uh, Riverwood Academy, which is like a Harry Potter like vibe without all of the bigotry. Uh, we even have a, a, a campaign that's like Game of Thrones before season eight and uh reclamation so, 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 so you can be able to catch all of our content on the cookout ttrpgs on youtube as well as uh twitch.tv slash kira858 and that's me it's the game from before the wheels fell off yeah yes. yeah <laughs> All right, Brandon. Uh, hi, I'm Brandon, aka Ashenworks. You can find me everywhere on the internet at Ashenworks, except Twitter, Ashen underscore works. I understand I'm talking real fast. My links are in the chat. Um, <laughs> I'm a tabletop RPG designer. I'm doing giveaways as part of all of this, so win some stuff. Um, and I am working on more games that are going to be on my itch.io soon, or go to Kofi and Patreon and see them early. Also, co-founder Huntsman's Hydra. We just premiered Fire in the Dark, which Jamie's going to talk about. And we have more shows starting next week. Okay, I'm done. Jamie. <laughs> Great. Hi, I'm Jamie Wolf. I'm an art and variety streamer. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Jamie Wolf, where I do digital art and play video games and just generally be a wild and weird person that I am. So if you Sweet like that kind of thing, <laughs> uh, you can also find me over on uh, the Huntsman's Hydra that Brandon just mentioned, where we have just premiered our new Blades in the Dark show, Fire in the Dark, where I am the GM. We had our first session, uh, so you can check that out on YouTube as well at the Huntsman's Hydra YouTube if you missed it, if you missed the premiere. But we've got and a podcast. wonderful cast. we got a wonderful cast, so come watch us do some dark fantasy stuff, because 
Yes, I can be called a sweet bean, but I love agony and making people uh, strive in the dark for the light of, light of hope. So. Rafiki! Yeah. Up there in the uh, corner. Sure. Uh, I'm Rafiki, Frank, um, co founder of this channel, GM player here. I do most of my TTRPG things here, and sometimes I do music as well. So, yeah. And because Kitty is not currently. Uh, available she's also a wonderful person that is often a cast ear on the channel she's just been recently taking the gm spot with our tales of Faron campaign which we just wrapped up not so long ago and uh, stay tuned because she's going to be back on the channel as a player so for our next show so yeah that is wonderful that is my bad i switched scenes back and good job me uh, <laughs> but yeah, thank you everybody again for donating. Uh, stick around. We're gonna have the uh, yeah next show happening soon. So see you soon. Bye. 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 Thanks everyone. Bye.